Hi, right. boys. Hi, boys. Hi, boys. All of my wives left me, but mm. it's okay because now I get to do all the cool stuff I didn't get to do when I was married to all my wives. I have one wife and one concubine, as the Lisa and Al Gaib. So... Not... Wow, four seconds in. <laughs> yeah. Four seconds in. So I said, no Dune references, no Dune references. I'm the Lisa and Al Gaib. Ah, ah, ah. I was actually, we were, when, so we were rewatching Dune Part 1, I told Aaron, I was like, yeah, I'll call you my concubine. You're my yeah, concubine. She probably, didn't, probably didn't like that very nah, much. Nah, she said, she said, I'll take that. Okay. Well, that's unfortunate. I mean, maybe, maybe she needs to, Aaron, don't, don't accept that, bro. You're better than a concubine, dude. Uh, hey, children. Good to see y'all. I'm, I'm glad we're all here. Thank you for joining. This is fire. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, see? wow. That is some insane laughter. See? Is that good or bad? I can't tell. <laughs> she couldn't have laughed harder. She couldn't have laughed <laughs> harder. She had to self disrespect. Great yeah, job, those Aaron. Those really those stepping really up funny. for women here, Aaron. <laughs> you know, I look to you for my feminism. So to watch mm. you fail like this is really disconcerting. Mm. That's, all I'm, that's all I'm going to say. Mm. And also, they're hissing in chat right now. They're hissing at Aaron. Yeah. By the way, you're saying you're not woman enough, apparently. Wow. Whoa. Damn. Wow. <laughs> did, they, did they say that? Whoa. They said that. Wow. Hey, you're putting some words in that creeper's mouth. <laughs> Aaron, uh, you no. you act like me killing my wife is going to be like some sort of like misogyny thing. I've never said I hate my wife. Well, that's not true. I never said <laughs> that I'm going to kill my wife because I hate her. I just said that I'm going to do it. Like. I might love my wife very much. It doesn't mean I'm not going to kill her. So, hey guys, like, today's stream is all about playing on speed running, getting kicked off Twitch, getting banned from Twitch. <laughs> this is our speed run. Well, no, like speed. Josh, in the same way that during our drinking streams, we have to check that box that says like we're referencing and possibly using alcohol products. Mm -hmm. We also have another box that says we will be referring to domestic violence against our partners. Mm. And like our okay, our okay I know for a fact we cannot joke about that. <laughs> Hey, I'm just saying what box we checked. Uh, hey, uh, Bri kill, Bryce, me, kill me like one of your wives Bryce Cam, telling the Bryce truth. Bryce Cam, real quick. Uh, we do not condone domestic violence, nor is this a laughing matter. All right, continue. No, we're just laughing. As it is written. As it is written. Uh, Lisa al Gaib, everyone. Lisa al Gaib. Uh, he, little bro ain't even Moadib, so... Bro, I don't want to be Moadib. He named himself that was really a fucking desert rat. Ah, Another the <laughs> desert mouse is wise. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, cool. So, how are the boys' <laughs> weeks? I think we should move the the week discussion to our Wednesdays. Uh, you know? Yeah, I'm let down me, for let that. Me your boys' week. I'm down for that. What, what did y'all get up to, Bryce? What did you get up to this week? What did I get up to? Well, we had a fantastic Final Fantasy 14 stream um, yesterday. Uh, yesterday, yeah. uh, where I uh, showed everyone in chat what my settings pages look like um i showed them yeah. um uh, the how you move a character over to a specific world because i had no idea how to do that manually it, it, walking. manually walking you through it yeah. um i appreciate everyone who was there it was a fantastic stream ryan was providing a lot of goofs and gaffes which i really appreciate and let's see what did i do i worked on a saturday and yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy. I worked a lot on my school project today, but yeah, that's that's my week. Nothing too crazy. Last Wednesday we did our first of these first graveyard shifts, mm -hmm. and then we didn't do anything Thursday, right? Uh, no. And then Friday mm -hmm. we had our Lethal Company and our uh, Sea of Thieves stream, which y'all we got some content out of those. Okay, we were worried that Sea of Thieves wasn't a hit, but honestly, we got some good content out of that. So it was funny. I'm gonna I'm gonna plug our tiktok page make sure you follow us there so you can get all our funny bits if you're not here live um and then saturday and sunday i don't think i did much i also have the memory these days the short-term memory of like whatever the desert rat y'all are talking yeah. about yeah that, mm -hmm. you know exactly what I was talking about. um then monday josh and i did our first weekly stream together mm -hmm. we played some league and it went pretty well we don't always have the best luck at league but we did this time because we did our five preliminary ranked games and won all five so that's Do crazy. you guys think, think since both the uh, one. since league has kind of um kind of treated you guys so poorly when it comes to the ranked system that like now that you guys are going back it's like all right fine we'll reward you now you've suffered enough mm -hmm. that must that must be what it is yeah yeah um I mean like that's that's what I'm gonna say is like 
like, and this is real. This is real. It's not even like a speculation. Like, League's matchmaking system does work like that, where it strings you along and it matches you with people who you're probably going to stomp over or whatever. So it makes you, like, feel good. And you're like, that feels awesome. I want to keep playing. And then they match you with losers and you get fucking wrecked. But you remember the high of winning so much that it keeps giving you that occasionally. That's exactly what happened. So we did win all five preliminaries. That is not going to happen next week. <laughs> so you guys okay. are, are doing gotten... a league stream next week for that, uh, that Dude, we're, we're, Tuesday? We're streaming our ranked climb. Are you kidding? Oh. Absolutely. We got to get out of iron. Yeah. All right. So, Josh, are we then doing your Valorant climb on Thursday? Yeah. We got, <laughs> we got Valorant. Um, and we got so much stuff to do. We yeah, gotta, we do. Because we got to finish the Fortnite grind um, yep. to get the Peter back bling. Mm-hmm. We got to do some Helldivers 2. And we got to um, beat I've, fucking Alan Wake 2. Beat Alan Wake 2. Then we got to get after fucking that other thing that you were just talking about, that I, Valorant. Dude, we got a busy schedule. We do. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, um, and then uh, the rest of my week, let's see. Uh, Tuesday was yesterday, so with you. Um, oh, that's what I did over the weekend was I did my yard. Now it's finally been warm enough to do that, so I was sweating my booty crack off out there. My whole backyard throughout the winter time got covered in clovers, which I liked and I was excited for mm-hmm. because I think the grass is I mean, it's fine, but it's kind of boring. So I had all these beautiful like wildflowers and clovers and everything. But then when I mowed, it pretty much removed like 98% of that. I didn't realize it was like sitting on top of the grass. So it's kind of all gone now. But hopefully it'll kind of spread out some. So that's good. I'm going to put some trees at the front yard, some cherry blossoms. Ooh. I think it's going to look good. So kind of planted that out for the for the springtime. That's what exciting. It's gonna look like. And then yesterday before we started streaming, Bryce, Reed and I went out and actually played an hour of tennis. And so I've been between that and the lawn work yeah, my body exhausted. my body is a temple that has not been well kept <laughs> yeah. this week mm. i mean it's in the process of of the upkeep but it feels awful <laughs> yeah <laughs> i took like uh, a four hour nap today i love tennis tennis is so much fun i remember one time after work this guy i worked with jack he's like on a big tennis kick i think everyone around that summer time like was because I work right right next to a tennis court, and so he's like, "You want to play tennis, dude?" I was so sweaty because it was like the temperature was like in the nineties, dude, and uh, mm-hmm. I was like done after an hour. Bro, still wanted to still keep going. I was like, "Dog, no, I'm going to die. I can't do this anymore. I can't. I'm a, I'm a little I'm a little gamer. I'm a little I'm a little gamer. I can't I can't stay out too long before I scorch in the sun." I'm actually super excited for Sunday. I am uh going out of town. To like wherever my closest IMAX uh, theater and going to see Lisa Al Gaib in person. Uh, wow! Wow! <laughs> wow! Yes, wow! Wow! Yes. yes! Yes! As it is written. About, as it is written. about my life. <laughs> a movie about my life. As it is written. As it is written. Um, hey, I just want to make this clear. <laughs> Despite being the Lisa Al Gaib, I do not denote the actions of Paul Atreides. Okay, that's crazy. <laughs> You're <laughs> a third of the clear. way into the book, Josh. You're a third of the way into the book. I don't have I don't have to be the whole way through to know Paul Atreides is the bad guy. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. In in the first couple of pages of, of the second book, they have a whole conversation comparing to what Paul has done to Hitler. Okay. Okay, <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Just e- making even, this clear. even then the third movie's not out yet, so let's let people catch up to it. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm just saying, if you if you're watching Dune and you think Paul is the good guy. Bro, Josh, you- that's literally a spoiler. <laughs> it's, literally it's not a spoiler. spoiler. It's not a spoiler. No, no, because here's the thing. The very first shot of the first movie is Chani talking about the Harkonnens leaving. Um, she's sure. like, the Harkonnens were here and they oppressed us, they oppressed us, and then they left. Who's gonna be our next oppressor? Immediately cuts to Paul. I wonder why. Okay, that's context. Though, exactly. That is, yeah, that's that true. No, more. Yes, that is, are, that no, no, is no, 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 no. literally cinematic storytelling. Yeah, you spoiled you're it right. for Aaron. You're right, but that's oh. not what the the general audience is going to pick up on. That's what a film critic is going to pick up on and relay to the audience. Look, and I'm going to say, is that oh, is this what makes people... sense on my second watch through? People with low media literacy will miss this. So you got that the first time that yes. you watched it? Yes. I, I, I don't believe that without you knowing I did, because you know, you know what? The Watching the movie, I was like, hmm, Paul Atreides is very Aaron Yeager. 
and then he is. So that's but all you I'm didn't, saying. You didn't know that be- without previous context before. I did. I watched the movie. It was like, wait a, wait a, wait a minute. He's the bad guy. And then I started reading the book. I was like, okay, he is. You you recognized a connection between him and Aaron before you ever knew any Dune material and went into After the watching block. the first movie, yes. Okay, so After then you didn't have that movie. thought when you saw that clip. When I saw the clip, yes, I did. I was like, okay, that's cinematic foreshadowing. But you didn't make the connection to Aaron. In yes, that I moment. did. I, well, I you didn't just said you did. I, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I didn't make the connection to Aaron. I knew he was the bad guy. I'm just making this clear. So hey, if y'all have the, seen to go check the it out. point you knew he was a bad guy before he did any of the heinous actions. Yes. I was like, I have a feeling this dude is the bad guy. And then I watched the movie. I was like, pretty sure he's the bad guy. And then I started reading the book. I was like, he might be the bad guy. <laughs> I, 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 I just. I, I actually. Just uh, I'm with Ryan. Uh, that is definitely not common knowledge. Um, I no. actually got spoiled on on that uh, when I like watched TikTok about like uh, about like uh, Paul being a, compared to like Anakin and all that kind of stuff. I'm um, just saying. Anyway, just saying. Is it my turn to talk about my week? Yeah, go for it, dude. Uh, yeah, so since we last did this, we streamed Sea of Thieves and Lethal Company. It was fire. Uh, yeah, I was worried that the Sea of Thieves was kind of a miss. Turns out from the clips, it was actually kind of a hit. Met not as a hit as kind of some of our other stuff, but uh, yeah, Lethal Company was really fun. I had a really good time doing that. Very much enjoyed watching the VOD and all the clips that came from it. Mm-hmm. That was a really good time. Started reading Dune of the Weekend about a third of the way through the book. Way better than the movie. If y'all have seen the movie, good. The movie's great. It's a wonderful adaptation. Very good. The book is significantly better. It's kind of uh, a little dense, but if y'all don't mind that, please read the book. Very, very good. I cannot praise it highly enough. Ryan and I did our league stream. As he was saying, we won all five of our prelims, which is really good. So we're ranked now. Uh, We're both Iron 1, which isn't the best rank, but it doesn't matter. We won all five prelims, and we had some great plays. I don't know if if that stream is really going to be clipped up or anything, because it wasn't really like that mm-hmm. which is fine uh yeah, it was great there were there were some very very good um moments from both of us elite gamer plays as the number two and number three league players in the world so, uh second and third only to jesus christ himself mm. yeah. where's faker in that equation yeah. faker is that, uh, is that know, jesus probably... christ is that the jesus christ we're talking about no he's probably five or something he's five i think aaron's number four i think yeah, yeah something like that yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no it's actually cracked as crap kathy goes crazy on on league of legends uh that's not to say aaron is bad aaron this is not um i think he just called you bad aaron yeah I think no he i did not i did not bad aaron, not uh, once again five. the josh and aaron beef continue oh from stream to gosh, stream bro oh. the josh and aaron beef was settled earlier today <laughs> <laughs> okay i think this it great. never ends yeah, it was very fun. Um, had dinner with Kathy and her family last night. That was really fun. And now I'm here on a th- Wednesday night with my two best friends, and we are doing the graveyard shift. How fun is that? You very know, fun. in like the movie where the guy brings over like the super goth girlfriend, and the and the family's like, oh, "Is that what it's like for Kathy to bring you over?" And you're in like your my Kim shirt and your ripped up black jeans and well so hair. we did we did go in and I and I'm I'm wearing uh my pocket chain and so I had I before we even left the house I had this conversation as I was getting ready in my head of like should I wear this I was like I'm pretty sure I've worn this to their house before so it won't be weird but I was like I don't know like um should I wear this yeah it's fine it's fine but I was like what am I gonna say if they ask I was like I guess I'll probably just say my like, email or something we get in Kathy's grandma is staying with their family right now. And so the first thing, me me and her grandma get along well and everything. But the first thing her grandma says is like, oh, what's that chain? Is it attached to anything? And I was like, oh, dang it. I was like, no, no, it's just attached to my belt loop. I, I don't know. She's like, oh, okay. I, was like, I don't know why I'm wearing this. I don't know why I'm wearing this. I don't know why I'm wearing this. It was, it was very, uh, yeah, so it kind of is like that a little bit. But, Should have um, chain whipped her. Put her in her place. Don't ask questions. No, whoa! I like Kathy's grandma. I like Kathy's grandma. We're friends. Then you stop speaking out of turn. I think we just need to kill grandma. Kill all old people. I didn't say you're killing. I didn't say you're killing. Kill all the old people. Kill all the old people. Kathy's here. 
Kathy's here. Oh, well, old people, okay, okay, he's got a different point, Josh. He's got a different point. No. He is going in line with your philosophy. Hey, Listen, I, we, I'm just saying, but but here's the thing is, is we've talked about that philosophy and I don't think it's stream appropriate. I think we get canceled as much <laughs> as much as I believe in that um, philosophy, which, you know, I'm going to say very Paul Atreides. As the least in Al-Gaib. Um, <laughs> very, very Paul Atreides of me. Uh, I don't want to get Dead Zone banned in its first few weeks of revi- Do you revitalization. Do think that if I brought the plan of killing all old people to Paul Atreides, he would say he would a okay it. He would he would give me the. Stamp I think of he would. I, I I think he would. Okay, yeah, but I mean, guy. he could see. <laughs> he I've never said see. I wasn't. I'm the least of Al Gaib. That's what I said. So whatever. Would you that see means. the future? Do you think you become a bad guy? He looks at the future. He's like, I don't see a lot of people that are here now. <laughs> <laughs> What yeah, happened? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Weird. We're 45 years in the future, and a lot of us are not around anymore. <laughs> yeah. Gives me an idea. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Um, yeah, that was my week. It was really good, and I'm happy to be here. So, Josh, are you going to read... I'm so sorry to keep it on the Dune discussion, but I'm curious. Are you going to read uh, Children of Dune and God Emperor? Okay, so I started reading without dune telling because, us the contents with uh, yeah I, I will not i will not um, <laughs> i started i started reading dune because i i got the first three from target for like four dollars that's crazy because of like a super deal so i was like yeah sure why not i'll give it a i'll give it a try so i have the first three so that's dune dune messiah and children of dune um so i will be reading those and then god emperor is a fan favorite which is the next one so i think i'll read that i'll probably what my plan Wait, that's is a currently, fan favorite mm-hmm, apparently god emperor is a fan favorite like it's not as i don't i don't, I don't want to use the word action-packed but it's it's very uh philosophical and dialogue heavy uh which is kind of in contrast to the first dune a little bit but i look forward to reading it but so my plan currently is to read the first couple all the stuff written by the original author he only wrote six of them and then his son took over and wrote mm. everything after the fact which is kind of apparently very like kind of fan fictiony i guess mm. but i'm gonna at least read the first six hopefully so we'll see what happens but i i know they get a little weird yeah. So yeah, I, I've seen I, the I, picture I, of God Emperor on the cover, and I'm like, okay. Yeah, I, I want to read God Emperor. I I, I hear it's uh, it's good. It's not for everyone because it's not as like again like, for lack of a better term, action packed. But I kind of look for because I I think what I like about Dune the most is kind of the philosophical and moral conversation about you know do you follow a messiah figure what do we do about that should you deify people in this way and if you do what are the consequences of that mm-hmm. and if god emperor kind of follows any sort of similar aspect then i think i'll like it a lot mm-hmm. so um i'll keep y'all apprised without spoilers would, of my dune journey as it goes i would on. love to to hear more about it because i really do um i would like to read the book but uh knowing my attention span i'm worried if i will even stick with it because it's such a dense book because everyone i say uh or everyone i've talked to that has read dune is just like it's a kind of a grind to get through well that, that's what i was gonna say is that like i don't think dune is as hard to read as people were saying because i was like this is gonna be fucking hard and it literally wasn't is not nearly as bad as like it seems that people kind of have been saying it is but you do have to pay attention when you read like Mm. if you even like start to kind of lose your train of thought and maybe like think about something else at all you're gonna have to reread that whole entire page bud Mm. (laughs) uh which which i've had to do which is kind of frustrating because sometimes i'll kind of like start thinking about something else in my mind and be like okay well i can't just afford to scan this page like Mm. i I have to go back and read there's several important things things here and if i miss that then i'm going to miss a whole lot of story here um so it is kind of a thing where you have to pay attention but if you do you get a lot a lot out of it very very good i can't i can't speak highly enough of it fantastic hey josh how's the stand going again the stand is is on my list it'll be the last three months of the year for chat i'm trying to read a book a month this year that's kind of my new year's resolution and the stand by stephen king is i don't know what 1300 pages long or something I started reading it sometime last year. Very, very good. But I just kind of fell off just because I got busy. It's, 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 it's a long book. It's still on my list. So I've saved the last three months of the year for dedicating it to the stand so I can finish it without having to worry about the time straight of like a month or something. So I'm sure you guys, if you stay tuned, will hear about my stand journey as well as Dune. This is the book I'm reading next. And to preface before I even show it, when I was... 
I don't even know. I think it was right before I met y'all. Yeah, because it was when I was still working at the candy store. Uh, I made these two friends and we started a book club because we were all bi. So we started mm-hmm. a book called Club by the Bi. And we were reading exclusively queer so books. Corny. <laughs> and mm. thanks, Bryce. Just roasting me for no reason. <laughs> it is, though. It's okay. It's okay. You continue, you continue, you continue. I mean, I was like, what, five years ago? Anyway, okay. well, now I just feel belittled. It's okay. Continue. We One of the first books we read was a book called A Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtues. And it was yeah. really good. I mean, it's it's kind of, I mean, it's YA. It's maybe even a little bit younger than YA, but it was really mm. good. You know, it, it's not, you you won't read me like, wow, this is profound material, but it's really nice. It's it, it struck home with me a lot because of the main character's specific struggles. Um, but but it was good. And so she she then wrote another book about the main character's sister called A Pirate's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy or something like that. Or maybe it's a noble lady's guide. I don't know. Um, not as good, but still pretty good. It was kind of more like history based and more. Uh, the first one is about like him being gay. This one was about her kind of like kind of like being ace, maybe. And anyway, so I picked up the her latest one in the series, which is probably gonna be the last one. And honestly, even just looking at the cover, I'm not too excited to read it, but I have to just like finish the series because like why yeah. not? So this is what I'm reading, or I'm going to start reading. This one is a nobleman's guide to scandal and shipwrecks. And it's their like long lost little brother or something. And I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna enjoy it too much mm-hmm. just based on what I've gleamed from like the cover and the and the jacket and everything, but we'll see. Fair. I is think it- it's gonna be nice because I've this is going to sound pretentious, but like I've been reading all the big boy books lately. Yeah, yeah, sure. So it's going to be nice to just kind of absorb something that's just simple. Mm-hmm. You know, like I reread uh, Percy Jackson at the beginning of this year, like the first one after I watched the show. And that was so nice just to be like, wow, a nice little 300 page kids book. Just, just you know, you know? Mm-hmm. so that felt good. I'm just um, is, I, I don't know if you've talked to her in a minute, but is Lily Wooters also reading this? I don't know. I haven't talked to her in a long time. Uh, last I talked to her, she was like moving to Japan. So Wow. <laughs> yeah. So I don't Dang. know if she'll have time. I think she's going to teach English, which is funny because that's what I was going to do when I met you. I remember. Yeah. Uh, remember that's what that. she's doing. But no, she probably won't. I don't think she liked the version as much as I did, if I remember right. Uh, but yeah, she okay. was in the book club along with our friend Sammy. That's where I that's got right, into yeah. um, A Darker Shade of Magic. And Sammy had read the first of the duology of the Six of Crows series in the Grishaverse mm. series. And mm-hmm. that's like not part of the book club, but that's what what got me into reading those first few books mm. was um, because of them. So. It's really sure. set off my reading trajectory since then. And now Reed's kind of reshaping it into more of the big word books. I want to read, oh, I, I, know, I know I'm kind of getting to a new topic here, unless y'all want to comment on the last one, but y'all were texting about, thinking about watching Shogun. I've wanted to watch it, but I want to read the book. Oh, I didn't know uh, it was based, based off I, a I book. I didn't know that. Yeah. Either, yeah. yeah, it's based on a book series. And it's funny because like the third one in the series is called Gaijin, which means white guy. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I'm like, how do we get there? What's that about? Um, but yeah, the show does look very good. Uh, it's got some very good reviews, surprisingly, for a book adaptation. Yeah. But I think because it's more of like just an adult, like it's there's there's no, it's not like Dune. It's not like Avatar. It's not like Percy Jackson. Like that's just an adult series that they're just people you know, are comparing it to like so. the game of thrones like a like an east asian game of thrones or a japanese game of thrones yeah, yeah. uh from the little the very little i understand of the series yeah i can see that being the case but yeah i'd like to read that i used to own it uh if y'all remember joe from what of course you remember joe from more greek mm-hmm. um he recommended i get it and then i did and then i never read it and i can't remember if i gave it away or what but i don't have it somehow anymore um so i'm gonna get it again and read it i'm excited mm. to do that one of the things i love about i've noticed kind of anybody that like reads the generosity of book readers because they'll be like you'll like mention that like oh yeah i've been like thinking about getting back in the ring it was like oh you are here's seven books for you to read i love so if you read these you'll love it love to read and it's like every single person like it's like i've all tried to get into reading like all the time like i really really would love to because it feels like i'm missing out on so much um so much media. And as a media consumer, I need to read it. And so I uh, I see that and I'm like, thank you guys so much. I will read three chapters and stop. Because <laughs> like, yeah, um, I think, sorry. No, you're good. Uh, it was for my coworker and she, she gave me all these books and she just moved away and she didn't even ask for them back. She just gave them to me. She definitely forgot about them. No, I've, yeah. I've told her about it many times. I'm like, hey, do oh, you really? want me to give these books back to you? And she's like, no, you can keep them. I'm Most like, book wow. readers will agree that it's not about owning the book and having it on your shelf forever. You give it away. That's what you do. You don't loan a book, really. You mm-hmm. give it away to somebody ah. and hope that they give it away to the next person and the next person. You know, If they give I... it back, then that's fine as long as like you as the owner are giving it to somebody else mm-hmm. after they give it back. Yeah. You know, that's kind of the thought. 
I do not agree with this sentiment. Um, <laughs> I I like to be like, hey, I read this and enjoyed it, so y'all should read it and enjoy it. However, you cannot have your my copy because um, <laughs> I'm very particular about, especially paperback books. Too paperback books are the bane of my existence because I like when I read a paperback book, if the spine gets creased, I like freak out. It's over for me. Mm-hmm. So like Dune, I don't have it on me right now, but it's the ver- the copy that I have is very thick. It's because Dune is about 800 something pages long. And the version I have is a very small paperback. So That's I'll be reading that, like, like kind of cr- cracked open so I don't bend the spine. I'm like, uh-huh. And the text is pretty small, too. So, like, that's pretty rough. But so I, as a result, I will not – I don't like to lend out my books as I'm like, they won't treat it as good as I do because I've lent out books before. And, like, my mom, I'll, I'll lend a book to her, and she'll fold the cover back mm. in half. I can't do it. Uh, so like, I like to be like, I read this and enjoyed it. So y'all should read it and enjoy it. However, get your own copy. I don't know where you can it. But <laughs> good luck because I'm just like, I can't. I can't. I it's do so love exciting. the the full bookshelf decor. Like that's what I go for. for yeah, sure. I want to yeah, have a absolutely. One day. But I do think it's 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 up to us to like just give them away with no strings attached. Mm-hmm. You know, that's got to sure. be like part of our our mantra to let other people read. Uh, so, Rex, I, I gave you histories while you left me, and yeah. then you returned it soiled. So, or maybe you didn't even give it back. But that thing was <laughs> uh, ruined because I think your sister dropped it on a cruise. Uh, a yes, or I, think, like that. I think there's something. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, that sounds. And about I think right. you yeah, still have is. my, and which I think you let her read. Maybe I my did. First, yeah. all, all of my, all of my Grishuk first copies. Uh, <laughs> maybe I don't know. I think all of them. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait, hold on. My cousin has some. Yeah. Okay, but wait, wait, wait. Did she complete them? Because yes. if she completed she them, read, then she read all of them. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Like, see, it's it's kind of yeah, like okay, they yeah. they may have come back uh, sullied, but well, if your goal is to share, then a lot. Histories are you left me? I don't think she finished. Right? No, she, she, that, she didn't. Um, no, she and dropped also, and said, anyway, bye. Here you uh, go. Yeah. Uh, also, that book's too sad. I can't finish it. I can't do it. I don't. I'm not man okay. enough. I'm not man enough. Fair enough. All of his books are too sad. Valid. Hold on, go real quick, real quick. Going back to um the book you're reading, Ryan, and uh the topic of Lily Wooters. Shout out Lily mm. Wooters. Cream Boys misses you. Okay, <laughs> yes, all right, Cream Boys. All right. misses you. Don't give Cream stream Boys context. Don't give stream context. I won't. I won't. Cream Boys misses you, Lily Wooters. Okay. Um, continuing on. Wonderful. I'm glad you're reading that, Ryan. I hope I hope it is good. But alas, if it is not, then well, at least you're finishing the series. Yeah, I think Lily's pretty easy to read. Nonetheless. W. Yeah, we're a couple creamers. Couple, couple creamers. creamers. Couple creamers. Couple you know, creamers. Cream Nation. I think this is a good segue to uh, what is your guys' favorite book you've ever read? Favorite book I've ever read. I think I was trying to think of that actually upon reading Dune because I used to read a lot in my youth and especially in kind of my early teens and stuff. I, I, I read a ton, but then I fell off because it was just kind of harder for me to start focusing on it. I had a lot going on in my life and I kind of find that, tr- that problem now is it's kind of hard for me to sit down and really focus on just reading, mm. which is unfortunate because I kind of feel like I'm walling myself off from a lot of good content mm-hmm. uh, in that regard. But it's just hard for me to sit down and like focus in the same way that I used to be able to when I was younger. Mm-hmm. But I've tried to really get back into that where like when I read, I sit there and just try to be present with the book as like while uh, stupid as that sounds, I guess. I, so I've been trying to think about what my favorite book I've ever read is like I really did enjoy Game of Thrones the writing in that is kind of dense but Game of Thrones is such a good story that it was really good but then I, I mean I don't know like it's kind of too early to say that but like at, like though I'm only a third of the way through the book after you know while reading Dune Game of Thrones <laughs> literally just was like what if I wrote Dune again but this time it's in a castle instead of in space so it's kind of like okay Game of Thrones was good Big Boss Baby vibes from this is what you're saying Big Boss Baby vibes absolutely as good as Game of Thrones is and Game of Thrones does do enough to stand on its own like it is just Dune again and so if Dune is the blueprint then alas Dune might take the cake it's it's very wow. it's really quite good but I, I don't know I've, I've read a lot of good books in my time so it's kind of I, I, I've, I've been thinking about it I'll continue to think about it if I change my answer I'll let y'all know I find it crazy that the political intrigue of dune is 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 taking so much from like your list uh, of like of topping that because it's like that's a lot of dune right it's a lot of like political like intrigue right yeah um, yeah I'm i mean su- i'm surprised you just get some you just get some really really good scenes where characters are interacting and then it's kind of like you're sitting there as the reader in the thick of this dialogue where it's like dude like what's what's about to happen here like who Mm. is who's on the side of our main characters here and who's against them and why and then like you kind of 
figure out through this dialogue like it dune explicitly tells you a lot but kind of like whose side are certain characters on is left to the characters themselves like the author is not going to be like and then this guy sided with the atreides Mm -hmm. it's like the character themselves has to reveal through their dialogue and they don't explicitly say it just kind of through their actions you're able to determine whose side they're on and it's really good it's really really good um in that way which is that the dialogue and the interactions is so rich so it, it's just been so good there there was there's been a couple different chapters now that unfortunately we're again i've, I've mentioned to y'all outside of stream we're just left out of the movie where it was like dude why did you mm-hmm. skip this scene though this scene does so much for characters and the world and the situational kind of uh exposition and world building it's so good y'all i love it a lot just great and i think that's that's honestly a big reason why i liked game of thrones too was Mm. all of the complex politics and world building that takes place through that so i think dune again just does it and i i I almost want to say does it a little bit better because it was the blue the blueprint super good Um, Uh, but what about y'all what are y'all favorite books right i'll go last ryan you go next well i have a lot of different points to make to everything i've heard i would say josh that most books most adult books like that they will let the actions speak for themselves and sure. not the narration. And I I think that that's one of the main problems we're getting with visual media these days, especially with, I think people especially notice it with book adaptations, mm-hmm. is that instead they do way too much telling and not showing. It's so much let the characters speak and say what happened instead of just showing it on screen or letting people infer for themselves what this must have meant. And I get it if you're protective of your media or like we talked about in one of our very first streams back when I was saying that maybe like studio execs don't trust that, and maybe for good reason, don't trust that the audience has enough media literacy, literacy to understand what's going on. And if a character does something bad, it means like that the show is a bad show because that character had the depth to do something. You know what I mean? Like sure. I think that's the, the gray lines that people can't seem to parse between sometimes. So yeah, I think a lot of adult media or adult uh, literature, you will see that. It, like that's the typical, that's the normal norm, right? And then in terms of Bryce, you were mention of politics and then what you miss from books compared to visual media. I think one of the, we, we've talked about this before too, where when you get to visual media, one of the biggest downfalls and one of the biggest chokeholds on creating good stories, like ones that just everybody can love, that that engages with it, is that it's so many hands. It's so many cooks in the kitchen. And especially right now when producers have the chokehold over what happens in a story because of money, then there's just so little wiggle room with what you can do, you mm-hmm. know, as individual pieces of the puzzle of who creates this story in the end, what the final audience sees. In a book, that's very much not the case. It's 80% is just one person's vision. Now, an editor will come in, maybe the publisher maybe the publisher will come in and say, hey, we need this, 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 you know? But that's not really going to affect the writing. That's not going to... It might affect some of the story beats, when and why things happen, how much they're willing to divulge, you know? But for the most way, 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 the most part, uh, for the most part, it's going to be just one person's vision. And Bryce, I know that you love things like Mr. Robot because it's one guy's vision. Mm-hmm. So that's why I think you, once you can finally bite that bullet and, and sink your teeth into reading, you're yeah. going to love it so much yeah. because that's all you're getting, you know, is that one guy's vision. Mm-hmm. And then my next point on the political aspect of it, pretty much any good book, and, you know, maybe I'll shoot myself in the foot for saying this later, like years from now, somebody's going to pull up this clip of me saying this, but pretty much any book good book, <clears throat> it's actually just all politics, right? I mean, you can say the same thing with, with visual media too, but I think they're really getting away from that because people, again, can't parse the media literacy aspect. Mm -hmm. But with books especially, it's all just kind of loosely veiled political narratives, you know? Like, I think the easiest example to make with movies and stuff is Star Wars just being about the Vietnam War. I mean, every book you read essentially is going to be the author had a problem with this real world situation that was happening and here's their take on it that is easily digestible through a fantasy lens. You know, Dune is about what the spice trade. So maybe this is about the Dutch Indian trading company. Maybe this mm-hmm. is about, you know, blood diamonds in Africa these days. Like, I don't know. This could be about a lot of different things. 
I'm, I'm curious what his specific inspiration was for Paul and for these different characters. I'm sure they all come from weir- real world experiences or things that he's absorbed through his life that he's now putting through this lens. But that's pretty much all that you'll get is that this is actually a reference to this circumstance. Game of Thrones is absolutely the same exact thing. I mean, it's, I, Josh, I haven't read Dune, so I can't say, but I have watched all Game of Thrones. So I don't think I have um, enough to really say the, the book's creation did or did not do this, but I would imagine that his bigger springboard was Tolkien. And I'm sure Dune has the same mm-hmm. springboard and they all mm-hmm. kind of come from that, which probably came from something else like Aesop's fables or something. I don't know. My point being, I, they might all connect to the same, real world larger problem that all stem from something earlier you know like when you look at you know the the issue with the crown today with royalty today that still comes from earlier and earlier circumstances so everything old is new again and yeah these all come from the same sources to answer your question though growing up my favorite book was probably lord of the flies and now i'd probably say that it is song of achilles uh probably because those are just like when i say favorite like what could i easily go pick back up and have a great time reanalyzing again mm. and, you know, just kind of sit there maybe one to two sittings and just read it all again and just love it every time. I'd probably say those two for just like standalone books. Like if I think of like, I'm never going to say like, oh, Percy Jackson number four. Like, no, I just think of that as a series, you know, like that's, mm-hmm. that would yeah. have to be an answer that way. But for just standalone books, it's definitely those two answers. It's interesting when you were talking about the political, how ever, basically everything is political. You, you brought up a point how Star Wars was about the Vietnam War uh, whenever that was going on. Um, I saw a, uh, a TikTok, so I don't know how accurate this is. He said, uh, what's, the, what's the guy that wrote Dune? What's his name? Uh, Frank Herbert. Frank Herbert, I think. Uh, he was alive when Star Wars came out, correct? Yeah. I believe I believe it was. He uh I think there's a quote of him saying uh, I'll tr- it's going to I'm going to try really hard not to sue because uh Star Wars like it seems like stole so much from Dune and it's like mythology and how it like starts on Tatooine, which is a desert planet. The uh there the farmers that are there that are Luke's parents are like uh like water like farmers or whatever um and how it's like water is a a very important resource and the jedi there was some name that they use for the jedi the bene Gesserit has a very similar name when it comes to like uh some of their practices so i thought that was super interesting to see that like star wars like took a lot of inspiration from dune which makes sense because it is the pioneer of a lot of that stuff um, i think it's not impossible to be inspired and wrote right sort of the thing again that you were inspired by but i think the truth is like when you're looking at the connections between dune to star wars from tolkien to game of thrones and all the interconnecting webs again they all kind of stem from previous places like dune is definitely just an inspiration of something else that that author read Mm -hmm. you know and i i don't think that martin was sitting there going like oh and just like in dune i'm gonna yeah it's it's just kind of subconscious and each time i don't think george lucas was like i'm gonna take that i mean maybe they did for some aspects and maybe it's more to pay homage than it is to steal you know i don't know the circumstances i haven't really engaged with any of these specific material materials too much so i i can't really say maybe i'd look at the evidence be like oh wow that that one clearly was Mm -hmm. stolen you know maybe but you know, I think the truth is you strip away all, excuse me, all three of these stories. And what it comes down to is, you know, disprivileged youth now fights against the system they're oppressed mm-hmm. by. And sometimes they become the oppressor themselves. This is an age old story that has happened in real life history over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And they're all telling it through different mediums, through different lenses, different periods of time. It's just a new coat of paint on the same story. And it's good. It's good to do that over and over again. And it shouldn't be faulted. Because some people in different generations, different decades, they have their own unique circumstances to apply to this situation. They have a new way to convey it to people. And there's always going to be new generations that say, that thing is the old thing. I don't want to pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. Oh, but this new thing that is actually the same thing. That's for me. I love that, Mm -hmm. you know, because it's the new thing. We need people to keep reinventing that wheel so we can always introduce it to the next audience. And of course, you know, keep it fresh, keep it nice, keep it interesting, keep it relevant as possible to that current generation so that they can understand that story. They can find themselves in that story. They can do better than that history. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. I think when it comes to Star Wars and, and Dune is that it honestly, the first couple, so the first uh, trilogy and stuff is though. There's obviously some Dune parallels you could draw and stuff. It's really less that and more of the second trilogy when they really delved into the political side of things, that is 
that is Dune reincarnated um, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Like the first one is like, yeah, there are parallels and stuff, but that's kind of about it. But the second, the second trilogy, so one, two, and three and stuff, that's where like it's just Dune again um, and everything. But but Ryan hit the nail on the head. Is that I, I don't think you can really be too upset about it because it's like okay, whatever. I, Star Wars and and again, upon reading Dune and stuff, looking back on Game of Thrones, I was like, wait, what the hell? This is just is just Dune. It's just Dune. Like and all of the main characters, like the Stark family specifically is just different aspects of Paul Atreides just made into one person mm -hmm. um, and stuff. Both of those things, Star Wars and Game of Thrones do enough on to stand on their own um, where they're, they're all good enough that you can just enjoy them as they are and not be like, this is just a rip off of, of what Dune did already. And I think that's important. You know what I mean? It's like, as long as they're not just straight up verbatim copying, I would say a, a, a version of example of copying is star Wars episode seven, copying Star Wars episode four. <laughs> it's just the same. It's the same story again. You know what I mean? It's like, that's copying, but both game of Thrones and star Wars proper, do enough on their own to just stand apart and stuff so it's not as big of a deal even though the dune aspiration is clear i would look at that as more of like they they said copies copying is the highest form of flattery yeah and normally i'd be like no no but in this in this example i'd say yeah obviously frank herbert did real well with dune if everyone was like i want to kind of do that yeah. in my own way and then they they did and they did it well enough that it's fine Okay, cool and on to what probably my favorite book um since I really don't read a lot, um, in my childhood, I read the first uh, Lightning Thief, and that was obviously, I know it's like the most basic answer in the world because literally every kid in the world uh, has read Lightning Thief, uh, but a more niche take on a book I actually finished in like three days, which I would like never do. Uh, Y'all know those Warrior Cat books? Yeah, 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 you're damn right. Yeah, I fucking I I stormed through those books, dude. Stormed, and uh, I think I've told you guys this, but I'll tell stream this because I think it's really funny and shows like an innocence of a child. Whenever I was in like I don't know, let's say like seventh grade, sixth grade, I would I was reading the book and uh, and I just got it like from the school library or whatever. And as I was reading, uh, I got a somebody wrote in a spoiler with Sharpie that the, a character dies. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was so pissed. All right. And this is where my like rage yeah. for spoilers kind of like really began, like how I hate them so much. And so when I, uh, I go to the librarian and I'm like, hey, this is in this book. And th she takes the book. And she scratches it out with a Sharpie so no one else can read it, which is good. Good. Good thing to do. Um, in my brain, I thought, oh, she's going to take the spoiler out of my mind and it will oh, then, yeah, yeah, it will sure. then, it will then, like, I will forget it and then be able to enjoy this book. And Bryce was 23 <laughs> years old. This was two years ago. But yeah, no, it was, uh, it was devastating for me. And uh, whoever did that, I hope you die in a plane crash. What's mm -hmm. going to happen in like 13 years, Bryce is gonna step through a time portal and realize it was, it was him. He, he wrote that. He he reads he reads a book that he doesn't enjoy so much. Like he hates the book so much, he creates time travel, goes back in time <laughs> to stop himself from becoming a reader. That's, <laughs> That's funny. Well, two two things about about Warrior Cats. So you mean so Warrior <laughs> Cats? You mean you mean Doom with Cats? <laughs> yeah, saying, um, Doom with then, Cats exactly. And then and then uh, the second thing is uh, is about spoilers. Um, I, I have a similar story and this pissed me off to no, to no degree. Um, let me go ahead and say this. Yeah, the so spoiler just, at the beginning of this podcast the, about to tell us is bad experience yeah, yeah. spoilers. Uh, this is, yeah, you're welcome. Um, hey, look, do was written in 1960s. If y'all haven't caught up with it, that's on you. <laughs> There's okay. a new generation right. every year. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, dude's been out long enough. If y'all have you, not experienced man, it. Again, man is literally a third of the way into the book. <laughs> In his twenty fifth year of okay, age, and I, now he says I he has the right to spoil look, the series. I don't want I don't want to say this. If y'all are not as smart as me to pick up on it, then I don't know what to say. Anyways, um, okay, let me let me go ahead and say this though. So this is gonna be spoilers for Star Wars episode seven. If y'all haven't seen it, then go ahead and tune out and close your ears if you care. But um so when that movie came out, it it was right as it came out. I was at Barnes and Noble with um my friend at the time 
and we were looking at some stuff and they had a bunch of Star Wars Episode 7 like merch or whatever out and so we were looking at it and I was like yeah that Kylo Ren guy he looks kind of cool I don't know anything about him though and he was like oh well did you know that he's Han Solo's son and then he kills Han Solo I was like uh, okay so that's like the biggest <laughs> thing in that movie okay like that was crazy I, I couldn't believe it I was like well that you just spoiled the whole thing the entire movie that's all that happens in that fucking film Yo, spoilers if you haven't seen that movie spoilers if you haven't seen it I'm, I'm trying to give a spoiler warning it was crazy I couldn't believe it I was like wow okay well now I might as well not even go see that fucking movie because I know, just I know how his life ends yeah, literally, it was crazy. I could, yeah, I couldn't believe it. Uh, as the least on Al Qaeda, I could have and decided not to. So, yeah, well, um, March 9th, twenty seven seven. Guess what happens? <laughs> it was crazy. Couldn't believe it. Um, F spoilers. Dude, sorry wait, for spoiling. Wait, Daniel. is that movie ten almost ten years old? Oh my god, weird. No, that's, that's insane. I, mean, I, I don't know what year it came out. What year it came out? <laughs> it's not real. I. Uh, I don't, wow! That don't give old? me a don't give me an age uh, an age check in chat, please, 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 please. No, I think it. I think he's probably right because I don't think I was working in the movie theater yet. Wow! Oh, oh dang! Holy crap! Well, there you go. I have not seen Rise of Skywalker yet, and I don't know I'm going to. Yeah, I so, don't think you should. Uh, that 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 movie has been spoiled to Kingdom Come for me, and honestly, I don't care. Yeah, um, I don't I, think you I, should I, I don't care. I, after. Uh, the last jedi i was like i don't know if i give a fuck about any of what's going on here anymore but yeah sorry sorry for spoiling a 10 year old film and also a fucking i don't, I don't even know how old is doing at this point um 60 year old franchise i don't think Apologies. i even knew dune existed until the movies came out to be fair josh yeah i i have a, a firm belief on, on no spoilers ever because you never know when it's someone's like first time unless it's like what, what's that movie where he's a ghost at the end you know oh yeah uh, six out like, of six it, it, yeah if it's something that like everybody it's like just part of the common culture that people know the ending of the thing then like sure but even then i tread lightly personally but i i'll always say like you never like if i have like my nephew right when he starts reading and stuff i don't want him to l miss out on the experience of something for the first time and, and learning mm -hmm. it on his own just being taught what the you know, the cool twist is or what the point mm. of everything is. I want him to have to get his own media literacy. I want him to learn it on his own and see if he can figure it out, you know, the first time. But even then, just have his own surprise because I feel like I'm privileged enough to have my own surprises on things. And I know there will always be new media, but in the same way there's always new media, there's always going to be a new generation who gets to experience for the first time. So I always try to do that. And I, I think that'd be a, a cool way for people to treat spoilers. Mm. Um, you guys remember that time when you guys spoiled Final Fantasy VII for me? No, no. I remember the I discussion. Don't. Yeah. Okay. You know what? No, actually, I do remember that. But for some reason, I remember thinking at the time, like clearly he must know this. Yeah. Wait. Wait. I mean, no, obviously. Which, wait. Hold on. What part are we talking about? A, a major character death halfway into Final Fantasy VII. Okay. Look. No. Like. No. I, no, no. 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 You listen to me. I Bryce. I look. I apologize. I do apologize. I will. I will say I apologize. That is the video equivalent of Darth Vader being Luke's father. No way. I gotta dude. be real. No that way. is the I, video game equivalent. I would of Darth agree Vader that 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 father. Josh's point is true. I am also sorry that we spoiled that for I you. I am sorry. I, I genuinely. It's okay. Genuinely, okay. Do chat. Do, do me a favor. If you guys know. What major character dies in the original Final Fantasy VII? Put it in chat right now. If you haven't, no, look away. No, look no, away. because literally we're doing a remake of the games right now for the new generation. Don't say it in chat. Please don't say it. Never played yeah, it. See, look. So does look, never they not, do they not know? Probably doesn't know. Yeah, probably doesn't know. And let's keep it that way because that is such an interesting... It's, it's not only just like, whoa, but it's also like, wow, everything stems from this moment too in terms of like people's motivations and such. So... Sure. Um, but speaking of Final Fantasy VII, I wanted to ask you all this the other day on stream, but I think I got sidetracked. But we got okay, so lover. Y'all, y'all did not play the original Final Fantasy VII, correct? Mm -mm, you no. did not play it. I didn't play it, but I watched the cutscenes and I did all the you know obsessive boy Wikipedia page things. Um, so I feel very well versed in the story and Dirge of Cerberus and all these different things. So I watched. Uh, let's play of the remake that came out what at this point like five seven years ago crazy and then they did crisis core and then they did uh what's intergrade and then now they just did rebirth mm -hmm. so 
I'm just starting Rebirth now. I'm maybe uh, like four hours into Jesse Cox's playthrough of it. And already in the first out 20 minutes, I was like, what, what, what? Like, that doesn't make any sense. How does that make any sense? So they are doing Rebirth something Rebirth's the really new one, right? Here. The one that yes, just came out? Just came okay. out. Okay, yeah, okay. The original game was split up into two games, like two discs yeah. that all came yeah. out at the same time. And this one now is going to, it looks like it's going to be three games plus all the extra side games and such. Um, each one, probably about 40 hours. So it's going to be the size of a regular JRPG, about 120 hour experience, but split up into three games over what? You're going to have to talk about like 14 years, essentially, of, of releases. So by the time we get the final one, it'll be about the time that it took between the original and the remake. Anyway, so in the first one, in remake, they didn't necessarily change story bits too much. Mm-hmm. And if, if, if anybody's in the chat and they're familiar with the story, tell me if I'm wrong about that. I don't think they changed story bits too much, but they kind of alluded to some characters, a character kind of already maybe knowing what the story is and them having to either try and change, change the story mm-hmm. or that they have to keep it the same. And they've like introduced these characters. Really you probably saw them when, when you played them, the Wisps. Josh, when you played, you probably encountered the Wisps. They're um, like those black soul. Like, what are they called in, in Harry Potter? The, uh, the, the mentors. The mentors. Yeah, they kind of look. They kind of look like that. They're flying around, and if you do anything that sort of interacts with changing the original narrative, then they come in and they try to like fix it. That's like that. so cool. Okay, right, right, right. This isn't explained to you. I think you kind of have to kind of get it and if sure, I remember right. Sure. But again, it's been a long time since I've played the remake uh, or watched it. Rather. And then, so if if y'all know, after Final Fantasy VII, the original was made, they did a game called Crisis Core, which mm-hmm. is a prequel game. It shows yeah. the character Zack, who, uh, and I, I won't spoil the contents Zach. of Final Fantasy VII, but there's a big connection between Cloud and Zack. And the ending of Crisis Core really explains a lot of the beginning of Final Fantasy VII and then kind of the end of Final Fantasy VII. Mm-hmm. And so they, they remade that for this. And they, from my understanding, they didn't change anything in this, which is interesting because you're like, well, this would surely change, right? Uh, because of something that happens at the end of a remake. And I know I'm, I'm clicking to a different million yeah, points. Yeah, yeah. Just, just try, to, try to follow me. Or just experience it yourself if you can. But then they made Intergrade, which is there's a there's an optional party member in Final Fantasy VII yeah. called Yuffie. Mm. Um, she's she's like she's from the from Final Fantasy VII's version of like China called Wutai. Uh, she's like a ninja. And she's an optional party member, but she seems to be like fully integrated uh, into this story now. And so they give her an extra little story. It's like five hours long, just like a simple little kind of like linear playthrough where you could just play as this girl. It's kind of explaining what she's doing during remake because she won't really come into the in the story until uh, rebirth. But it's kind of like, well, so what was she up to? You know, like incorporating her into the story for real, giving her an actual background where she didn't have one of the original. But at the end of hers, it really hammers home like, oh, and by the way, like, yeah, things aren't right here. Like something's messed up. And so now in the first 20 minutes of Rebirth, I was like, oh my gosh, like how are certain characters here and how were there, like, it's so interesting. So mm. I, it's really cool to see a remake of a game where they're kind of not changing anything. You can still experience it kind of to the same level that you did before mm-hmm. in the original, but also adding these layers of depth that kind of in a meta way discuss the what it means to do a remake and this in this era of remakes it's really i'm not saying they're doing like this fantastic take on it or whatever i'd have to wait till they get to the end and see like what a good job they really did to mm-hmm. really judge it but regardless it's interesting to see somebody actually talk about that because we really are living in the age of remakes and ports and all these things and there's criticisms to make and i think people make a little too strong of criticism sometimes in regards to remakes and ports personally but still to, to see like a big studio like square enix talk about the sociology of remakes in general is really interesting while still like expanding their story to untold heights. So mm. I, I'm excited to see how they finish it off because they've, they've bitten off a lot. So it'll be hard, I think to finish it in a compelling way, but I think if somebody's going to do it, it's going to be them. Although final fantasy has had some PU stinkers. So, so we'll see what happens, but yeah, y'all should maybe take it at the beginning again, or maybe, maybe even watch a playthrough of the original game. So you can see how it changes. Mm-hmm. I mean, Josh, I know that we've had discussions of why would you not, just consume every bit like why not always do the extra cut version of something you know i think if you wanted to experience the story which which you should because it's so interesting what they're doing here even if you don't care too much about final fantasy or this story in general or even if you just want to see hot cloud you know if that's all it is for you then sure, you should sure, do yeah. um then yeah watch a just watch a quick let's let's play or just all the cut scenes from the original game you know spend like eight hours doing that or whatever 
and then play through or watch a playthrough of, of the remake and then Crisis Core and then Integrate and the Rebirth. And then by the time you finish all that, it'll be time for the new one. Are they going to remake Dirge of Cerberus? That's a good question. Um, from what I remember of Intergrade is they kind of already introduced a little bit of that. So in Dirge of Cerberus, they discuss um, Vice and uh, what's his name? Not Vincent, but the other guy. Or maybe it is Vincent, but like before he's like Vincent. I can't remember. He has like a different name. They oh. come in at the end of Intergrade as like a boss fight or something. But it's not, it's it like, but like Cloud isn't there. And he obviously t- plays a big part in Dirge of Cerberus. So yeah, I, that, but that takes place obviously like years after Final Fantasy VII proper. Sure. So I don't know. And also like, I know Advent Children isn't like so-so canon, but like y'all going to do something about that? Are you like incorporated in some way? Because they kind of already incorporated like the backstory of Dirge of Cerberus into Intergrade. So they could. I could see them tacking on Advent Children as like some post-game thing, you know? I don't remember much about what that story is. I know it's, again, several years later. And doesn't he have the shoulder spikes in Advent Children? Doesn't he have the spikes? And yeah. now he already has the spikes in Final Fantasy VII Remake and Rebirth? What's that about? Why does he already have the spikes? Just Why does saying. he have the spikes, guys? Why the Especially spikes? the people who have no idea what the spikes mean. Why does he have yeah, the spikes? Wrong, an- wrong answer is in chat only. Yeah, why does, why does, wrong is why does why have the spikes? spikes? Why does he have yeah, the spikes? Have spikes? Mm, he played a wrong game of Temple Run, and he got the spikes. Wow. Yeah, amen, amen. So Cloud has like a shoulder guard, like a metal shoulder guard. Uh-huh. And then in most of the... Whoa. It's, I, whoa. Can I be all those spikes? Wow, can I? Can I, I yeah. Spikes? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he has Real. this he has this metal shoulder pad. And not until like Kingdom Hearts and I think in Advent Children, he adds like these bolts to them. He's got like these bolts. So that's like way after the actual game. Mm-hmm. But now yeah. from the get go, he has the spikes. So like what does that mean? In a story that's about like, hey, some people might already know how this story ends, what does it mean for him to already have the spikes? It just adds a little layer of you to go, huh, what's that about? Does it have intention? Or is it for really you just go like, what's that about? Maybe it's just cool. <laughs> They're like, they're like, dang, the spikes were cool. <laughs> we, <laughs> it, it really could be as simple as that, as the spikes were cool. How interesting would it really be, though? Real, real. If somebody, that, you know what? I could really see this idea stemming from that thought of, man, the spikes are cool. What else was cool? Whoa. What if we like, yeah, I can see that that train of thought going. That'd mm-hmm. be interesting. Right. At what point were they just working on a remake and they decided, hey, let's add some of these sort of meta commentary? So Yeah. I'll, I'll, I don't know. I, I was playing um, remake and I probably got about halfway through the game and it was a great game. I, I don't have uh, like, I didn't stop playing it cause it was bad. I, I just played it so much that I just kind of got burnt out on it. And then I got into a fight that I just wasn't supposed to be doing at that point in the game, but I was so determined to beat it and just couldn't that I was like, well, this game too much for me. And so I like put it down as, and then I think I, Actually, Pat, it was when I started living with y'all, I tried to pick it back up, and I forgot all the controls and just couldn't do it, and I was like, you know what, forget about it. And and it's one of those things where I was too far in the game to really justify like restarting it, mm-hmm. but I do feel bad about it because I did enjoy it so much. I was mm-hmm. having such a good time with it. Um, so I think one day I'll probably pick it back up, but it'll probably just have to be a little while from now. Um, when I've kind of washed everything out of my mind um, from it, so that way I can kind of go into it semi fresh again, because uh, it's it's a long game. It's long. So long. Um, and, and dude, rebirth and I, and is I, like even longer. It's like a hundred hours, hundred yeah, plus. Yeah, I, I yeah, I put several several hours into that game and whatever. So I think just restarting it now and having to redo all that, because again, I'm a big explorer in video games i like to go to every nook and cranny so having to do that again is kind of a daunting task for me but uh again wonderful game love cloud um big sword how cool is that so i'll I'll look around to it one day real Um, berserk reference in final real berserk reference you know actually some guy in physical marketplace was selling a replica they made of cloud sword and it was a uh, life size. Uh, it was, it was, and I was like, dude, I want. It was, it was bigger than me. And I was like, I want this. I want this. Come on, the Buster Sword is elite. It um, is really cool seeing. I bet they had to spend a lot of time like deciding how they wanted to do this. But it is cool seeing him like take it off and put it on, the yeah. thing. And like, because a lot of people are like, how would you actually do that? But, yeah. but they they do it pretty smoothly. And it's kind of yeah. it's kind of it makes sense. Yeah, but he doesn't like have anything to clip it on in the back. I think they're just like like f it, like it's fantasy, you know. Yeah, so fine. he just kind of he just kind of puts it back there. There's just nothing that you know, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm trying to th- I'm trying to even think another about, man has like, a how... hand that's a turret gun, so whatever. I'm, I'm literally true. trying to sit here and think about how guts does it, and I think he just 
holds it the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Bruh, I, I think he might just kind of hold it. Because, yeah, I don't, I don't think they could really come up with a way. Of, if your sword is bigger than you are, mm-hmm. how do you carry that around? Uh, and I think he's just, like, he just holds it. He I was about does. to say, like, it would be harder for someone like Link to, like, try to put it back in your sheath. The sheath that's behind you, you know? Yeah, sure, sure. In, in most, that's a long sword, yeah. Yeah, in most fantasy, like, media like if it's an actor doing it, they'll keep the, the sheath on the side because sure. I bet it's really difficult to do that. Like the actor trying to get it back, you're know, stab yourself in the head. But then I was yeah. thinking like, think about Geralt. He's got, he's got two back there. Two of them. Imagine I'd be like, ha ha. Oh crap. That's the wrong one. Like, that's I, the that wrong one. So annoying. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Yeah. That'd in be the hard. books though, they explain that that's a bit, the two mm. swords, like in the games, it's so that one is silver and that's for monsters. Yeah. And one is for humans. Uh, steel and that's for humans but in the books they're like yeah we say that but the truth is like that's there's sh- not even enough silver in these things to really matter so that's so funny mm. yeah it's or or rather they they it's not a full silver sword it's it's like steel and then like the edge has silver on it because that'd be like they're like that'd be so effing expensive and we lose these things all the time we cannot <laughs> right. do that do they and say that they do they say, say that in the books they lose the swords like all the time yeah, like in the one that in the one that I just read, which is just like a side story, mm-hmm. he loses his swords, and that's like the whole story is like he, somebody took them and he's trying to find them all the time because mm-hmm. he's like these like they're so expensive, like I have to get these things. But people are like other uh, he talks like Dan Lyon, like some other Witcher, and he's like, dude, like just get another one, and he's like, he's like I could, but I'd have to go all the way to these dwarves to remake them, and he that's does, like, doesn't so, want to do the work. Yeah, he's like that's, that's so much so effing time, like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> That's really funny. He's like, just go to Vesemir, get a new one. He's like, I. That's so embarrassing. Like, I can't do that. It's literally like he's just kind of whining about it, and I love it. He's like, like I'm here. This is an island. I know they're here. <laughs> that's Tanjiro Core, Tanjiro and Demon Slayer Core, yeah. bro. I wanted Love to um, uh, talk about. Uh, so this kind of ties into The Witcher. You guys haven't played Cyberpunk, have you? No. no. Now um, that it's like fixed up, I would like to. You should. It's really good. I still need to beat the DLC, which I hear is fucking amazing. Um, I still need to do it. But there was a book that came out alongside uh, Cyberpunk that Spotify added as like an audio book. And okay. I uh, I listened to the entire book. And the if you do play it, Ryan, play it as the female voice actress. She is phenomenal because she does the audiobook the female voice actor is like the main girl you play v she uh voices all like the characters in the whole audiobook and uh she does a phenomenal job it's so impressive to me to to let a voice actress like shine like she did on um this specific like uh the way she like talked with specific characters like they didn't say which character was talking because she just did the voice for them and you'd be like oh that's x character and I'm like, that's so fucking cool. This person is so good. Why haven't I seen her in like a bajillion other things? Yeah, a good narrator will, will make or break an audiobook. Absolutely. Reed and I were reading a book together. Uh, we were listening to an audiobook together. And I had to stop the audiobook because it was just kind of abysmal. And he has to stop books all the time because he's like, the book is good. But he listens to audiobooks like nonstop. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, this story is interesting, but I cannot listen to this person do it. And we were reading that same book. He listened to the audiobook, but he didn't realize the structure of the book. The structure of the book is that there's a daughter and she's half of the narrative. And then there's a father in the past and he's half of the narrative. He didn't realize that they were going back and forth mm-hmm. because I guess the uh, the, the, the narrator, narrator was not doing yeah. a good job at explaining that through the way that they were narrating. Mm-hmm. And so we had a completely different experience mm. because he didn't realize that half of the book you're in the past and half the book you're in the present. I'm like, how did you even understand this book then? <laughs> you know that tweet of the girl that's like, I got 30% into a book and only just now realized the main character is not a horse. <laughs> Y'all seen that tweet? Yeah. 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 That's and, the, um, I, that's what I must imagine it was like. Like, how did you do that? That's exactly what it? it's like, like with audiobooks, because um, yeah. there were points where I was like, what the hell is going on? Like, where are we right now? And I, f- I feel like uh, it's just like you have to be very attentive, like every time you listen to audiobooks, because you will fall behind. Yeah. I, I, I have no problems with audiobooks. People that, that enjoy them, I'm so glad you enjoy them. I can't do it because, like, people will do it while they're doing other stuff. Yeah, and I listen like, to no, it while I, I drive. I have to reread pages all the time mm-hmm. just because, like, if my mind went somewhere else for just a moment, like, I've got to come back and mm-hmm. understand it, you know? 
Yeah, so yeah. people that read audiobooks, that must be so difficult to actually pay attention to everything. I'm not I'm not trying to suggest that you're not. I would say that that's not built for me. Like, I'm mm. glad you found your medium, but that I, it's not built for that. What, the, the few times I have read audiobooks, or re- said read, the, listen to audiobooks, were in college when like, oh crap, I have a book I have to read. Let me get this on an audiobook while I read at the same time and put this thing on like triple speed so I can get to this thing, mm-hmm. you know? Because if I'm reading by myself, I'll read at the pace that my like I would speak out loud, but if I can listen to it in triple speed, then I can read at that speed. You know, like I, you know, if I can hear it, then I can look at it at the same time. Mm-hmm. So that'll like help my brain go a little bit faster and absorb it. So I did that for this book called um, Body of Work by, mm. by this lady called something Montross. And it's a real interesting book. It's her personal account of being in med school and having a cadaver and developing this not like a weird one but just like her sort of like relationship to this cadaver that she had to work on being like just these feelings you have in med school of experiencing this dead body through this scientific lens of like what was this person's life like and i'm digging Mm -hmm. through their guts and i'm cutting their body parts off and this is both like so intimate for a person that i don't know it's not like sexual at all that's not my point it's just like this I'm just so close and I don't know them at all. And what would their family think? Well, it's like it's very interesting. If if you enjoy like nonfiction at all, you should give that give that book a shot. It's very interesting. That is really mm. cool. And it's short. It's very short. Yeah, I haven't. Yeah, I haven't heard of that. Um, interesting. I'm not an audiobook guy. If I'm gonna read a book, it's gonna be read by me. Yeah, yeah. I, I will always I, prefer that because I like like a voice will naturally occur in my head for what this person mm-hmm. sounds like, or I want to develop my own cadence for how they speak and so forth. Absolutely, a hundred percent. Which which I like, um, and whatever. I, sometimes there are some audiobooks that are elite. Um, if y'all remember the Junie B. Jones series, uh, I believe it was the no, it wasn't the author herself. It was some some girl that narrated those, and she went crazy, just crazy, just crazy for a children's audiobook, and it was so good. Um, cannot speak highly enough of it. Um, I may have shit. told this story before, but when I listened to the Tale of Despero. Uh, audiobook yeah. as a kid. I don't think yeah. I've heard it on stream before. What is that? Uh, like, can you remind me? The Tale of Despero. Yeah. Um, it's a book. Mouse. It's about a little French That's mouse. Right. That's in a right. castle. Okay. And the, the edges on the book are frayed. It looks like a mouse chewed on. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's a really good book. It's a really good kid's book. But when I listed the audiobook as a kid, I, I'm prone to night terrors. I always have been, still am now, but not so much. But especially as a kid, I was prone to night terrors. So that's, if you don't know, that's, uh, or sorry, sleep paralysis. Night terrors too, but I'm talking about sleep paralysis here. Um, if you've never had sleep paralysis, if you don't know what it is, it's where your your mind wakes up before your body does. So you can open your eyes, you can move your eyes around, but your body is still asleep. You can't move it. And there's ways to get out of it. But typically when you wake up in this state, you're disoriented. You don't know what's going on. Growing up religious, I always thought I was there was like a demon like trying to kill me or get me or whatever. Like Satan had his hands on me and like that's what was going on. So, so I had this moment one time waking up listening to my tale of uh, Despero audiobook. It was on CD and I was facing the wall and the CD player was behind me sitting on my um, dresser. Forgot I had fallen asleep listening to it. So when I wake up in sleep paralysis, all I hear behind me is this gruff British guy going, I'm going to get you and tear you up and eat you or whatever. <laughs> and it was skipping. Oh my god! And it kept saying that over and over again, like that line over and over again. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what in the world is that? Like I was yeah. literally petrified, like literally by the definition of the word petrified. I could not move. I was paralyzed. I bet. Holy and shit. And finally I could like, after, I don't know how long, it feels like forever sitting in that, in, in that position, but it might be like five minutes. I don't know. I can finally move, but still I'm just too scared to turn around. And finally, I think something clicks in my head of like, wait, why are they saying this over and over again? Like it's been too, like we're past the point of comedy here. Like, why, why are they saying this? And so like the, the realization kicks in and finally I turn around, I'm like, oh my God. But like, that was terrifying. Mm-hmm. That was yeah. so sure. scary. Dude, and then me, that connects to this terrifying. one other bit. And I know I've told y'all about this, but I don't think I've said it on stream. One other very similar situation I had to that was, so you probably, y'all probably remember, for a long time, my gaming setup was like a 56 inch television, like mm-hmm. by yeah. itself sitting yeah. on my, on my uh, dresser or whatever. Mm-hmm. And that's how I game, just like that, just like on this huge effing TV. But it was just like a regular TV. That's what it was. And so when I lived in, I guess I was in, uh, I, it was one of, right, right when I moved to South Carolina. Yeah, yeah. I had this really cool room and 
I had a couch in that room and I fell asleep on the couch and I was turned away from the TV. And Windows used to have this uh, glitch on it where if you would like highlight on your, or if you like drag, like click and drag on your home screen, sometimes it would take away your like background image and replace it with like whatever you highlighted with like whatever your your color theme is for your computer. And at the time for me, it was red. And so for whatever reason, my background glitched away and it was just a, a full red screen. And so I woke up and my whole room is, a, is just a washed in red and I'm turned away from the computer. And all I can see in my whole room is just the whole room is like bright red. You know, like if I like if Josh turned on his LED red lights on like that, like all red before mm-hmm. this is before LEDs were like a big thing. Yeah, yeah. Then it would just look like I was in hell. And so that's what I thought happened. I thought, oh my gosh, I'm asleep. Or I was asleep. I woke up. I was in sleep paralysis. My whole room is a wash in red. I'm in hell. Satan is there. And if I turn around, he's there to take me to hell because I'm gay and I'm a sinner. And now I'm going to die and go to hell and be tortured forever. And then I turn around and I was like, oh yeah, it's the effing giant monitor that I have. <laughs> so if you never had sleep paralysis, don't touch that stuff. Turn turn that dial. Don't have it. I know all of you want to have it. Don't have it. Yeah, that's crazy. That there's your, there's your Ryan lore for the stream. Ryan Lore. Thank Ryan you, Ryan Lore. lore. Thank well, you, Ryan Lore. We got, yeah, we yeah, got yeah, a little yeah, Dead Zone well. lore. This stream. Yeah, well, our Dead Zone historians are writing this down. Right, jotting this shit down. That's crazy. That's crazy. Can't say I've had sleep paralysis, but I've had weird spirits in my room. Weird um, spirits. Weird spirits. Um, Opposed is just the regular, like yeah, the chill the ones. Chill the chill ones. 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 Yeah, yeah, they're weird. They're freaks. Um, they suck toes and love white men's farts and all that. So <laughs> Whoa! Real, real freak spirits. Yeah, wow, weird. that is insane. Spirits and I got something in common. Where are these spirits? Like, can you just point me in the direction? Or Josh like <laughs> felt a whiff after he booted. It was like that's the spirit. <laughs> Yeah, no. The, the first time I heard in front of Kathy, I was like, "That's the spirit, the spirit, the, <laughs> the weird spirit, spirit, the weird the spirit. freaky spirit." <laughs> You've seen them, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the weird freaky spirit. That wasn't me. I see weird <laughs> freaky spirits. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Uh, I'm sure Kathy confirms. Uh, Kathy, that's your cue to be in chat and say, "I can't confirm." <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, Talking, dude. but but chat. I want to ask some questions to y'all as ah, y'all there been we go. hearing all this. Like, so chime in if if you've got a moment. What are y'all favorite favorite books growing up today? What are your favorite books? Have you ever had sleep paralysis? And do you like audiobooks? I want to hear all that from the chat while we pick this pick one going. of those. K- no. Pick one of those. No, no, no. All three. No, all three. That's crazy. All, three. all right. If you if you love me like I love you, you'll do it. I love this parasocial you even, relationship. You, even, you keep yeah. you keep with our chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know you guys, and I need to know you. More. You like lead with love. I leave with fear. You know. Hey, I'm kind of like the Lisa and Agaib in that way. Oh <laughs> Sacrilege. Sacrilege. There can be only one. I'm just saying I'm like him. I'm just saying I'm like him. I'm not actually him. Lisa Lagaib. You have to believe me. Lisa Lagaib. You gotta believe me. Please, please, please. Lisa Lagaib. Lisa Lagaib. Literally, I can't look at y'all anything else than just like the cast of Big Bang Theory. Like, there's no, there's not even a laugh track to save you. Well, I, I think Kathy feels the same. It's like I'll, I'll go to Kathy and I'll, and I'll do this. I'm like, Atreides, and then she has to say Atreides, Atreides, Atreides yeah. six times before I let her off the hook about it. She's definitely sick of it. Um, I also asked her to change my name in her phone to Lisa and She said no. Um, so okay. Wow, but, not a believer. Uh, yeah. Not a believer. Uh, we'll get wow. her eventually we'll get her eventually yeah i've foreseen it i've You've foreseen, foreseen it, it. <laughs> meaning i'll just annoy her until it happens <laughs> but yeah i've foreseen it so well, right he's the man that asked the question he knows he'll get a no to anyway absolutely hey hey kathy uh i can't hear from here but atreides <laughs> what? is she doing listen, it say listen. atreides six times I'm sure she's doing it. I'm sure she's, <laughs> I'm sure she's doing it. <laughs> Atreides times six. <laughs> so um, we, were, we were talking about remakes. What's a game? And Josh, I already know your answer, so give it a different one. Yep. All right. What is a game you would love Bloodborne to remake. see? Bloodborne remake. Bloodborne yeah, remake. Yeah, yeah. Bloodborne, Bloodborne remake. remake. Bloodborne long, remake. Long, 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 long. All right. So get another one. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> nope. I can't give. I, so, actually, I can't give Sony I any. Think about the question. I don't want to give Sony any other game. I'm just going to say Bloodborne, and I don't care how it happens. It's got to okay. happen. 
genuinely, do you really think that Bloodborne needs a remake? Would it yes. benefit at all from a remake? Yes. I don't yes. think. I don't think. Or do you just want it, it on PC? I don't think it would benefit from a remake. I think I would benefit from the remake because mm-hmm. I well, get to okay. play it again. Wow. Okay, you could just do that now. I don't want to. I want to do it. What are changes that they would make that would be like? I want to see that shit in cutting edge graphics. I want to see that. I think shit it. In I a... think it holds up. It looks great. It, it does. It does hold up. I'm not, here, so here's the thing. Okay, let me let me be clear. Bloodborne is a near perfect game in every aspect, whether that's music, graphics, story, characters, gameplay, whatever. Near perfect. And I would even say perfect. I'm only saying near perfect because I'm sure somebody's going to point out something and it's like, okay, whatever, hater. But so I'm going to say, like, (laughs) as close to perfect as you can get, Bloodborne is that. So, sure, does it need a remake in that regard? Is a remake going to make it better than it is? Probably not. I would like to see it with cutting edge graphics. I would like to see it in a full 60 FPS. Like I want to see all of that. Like it is such a good game. Like you're remaking every game under the sun. Last of Us re- was remade like three times. Okay, and for no reason at all. Like if any game deserves to be remade, it's Bloodborne because it's just so good. Like just to, just in terms of just reverence just pure reverence please let's remake it let's see it in like modern age please Josh, please please i don't know if you saw but ghost of tsushima is getting remastered for pc what yeah bro that's one, that's <laughs> yeah. one years old that's two months old I yeah <laughs> yeah it, it comes out in like two months <laughs> mm. crazy well, again, again, I, I like Bryce and I have had this conversation. I don't think Bloodborne remake at this point. I don't think it can be anything other than a launch title. I don't. I don't think that you know it. It can really exist as anything other than a launch title. There's so much hype and so much writing on it mm-hmm. that I really think if it gets remade, it's got to be as a launch title. So, will that be the PS6? I don't know. That's maybe crazy. not PS6, but I think uh, a launch title for sure. That's crazy that console exclusives are that far and few these days that a remake of that game would need to be a launch title. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, did I, I just, Souls. yeah, I mean, it, it was with Demon's Souls. And that's silly. Like, no offense to Demon's Souls at all. But with the content library being that sparse. Yeah. That yeah. being a launch title, that's silly. A lot of people yeah, are really upset agreed. about the uh, just the PS5 life cycle in general because it. One hundred percent. Sony, I mean, Sony already uh, mentioned that they were uh, they were uh, on the latter half of the of the PS5's life cycle, which is insane because it feels like which makes no sense. games that does make came sense. out. Yeah. Well, here here's the thing: is in terms of like just length of time years past sure maybe makes sense but let's be real dude there's like six games that have been made for the ps5 Mm -hmm. okay like like that's just like titles yeah like i i just want to be clear that's like unacceptable it's like it's like six original titles and then like everything else has been just a remake or a remaster and like please 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 at that point just don't release another console unless you've got like actual games to supplement that because here's the thing yes i want to see a bloodborne remake and then going away from sony into nintendo i would love to see a don Kong 64 remake at the same time please don't release another console if every game on it is going to be a remake or remaster we need to see some original shit or there's just no point because that like i i kind of understand the upset with it where it's like dude the ps5 feels like it just came out we just got to the point where anybody that wants a ps5 can actually just go to the store and get one and we have no games on that and we're already moving on you've got to be kidding i believe that it doesn't even make too much sense to have like console exclusives and really i mean i'm gonna get ready for the calls for this in the future when dead zone is so famous but the Xbox and the PlayStation are literally so similar these days. Like they yeah. used to have defining characteristics yeah. and now they really don't at all. Like they're just the same thing, different paint that it doesn't even make a lot like, and I don't even need to see a PS six or an Xbox 5,000 or whatever it's going to be called. Absolutely. Because I, I, I bet people said this with the GameCube when the way came out, but like the graphics are so good. I really don't need right. to see any better. Yeah. I really don't well, need to see any better. Like I don't. And I'm sure I'm going to look at games five years and be like, Oh, I thought that looked better at the time. Okay, fine. Whatever. Call me a, old man sure 
But l- get, yeah, let it have a breather. People couldn't even get this thing until last year. Yeah, exactly. Mass, you know, so give it a moment. You know, we people are broke right now anyway. They can't do it. And you console manufacturers, you sell these things at a loss because you hope that people get games so that you make a profit. So why don't you not waste more money on one R&D if you Sony for your unbelievable wastes of consoles out there like the effing handheld crap you did, the Wii U pad that you did. PSVR 2. Uh, um, and the PSVR 2, yeah, thank you. Why don't y'all chill out a moment and invest more like as a producer into some smaller companies and stuff, let new people thrive in this space because people are way tired of AAA games, quadruple A games, you know? I love you, Skull and who, who did that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Get away from your Ubisofts, you know, get away from those yeah. companies and let the, because everybody, Bryce, you're making a, a good point the other day when you were talking about, you know, it is these indie developers that people are talking about more. You know, I, I disagreed that people are going to sort of follow the trends, but people are talking about them more. People are spending money on them more now that they have it. And they're going to be going after those kind of games because they're unique ideas and they're people taking bigger gambles than a AAA studio is going to. That has nothing to do with the ve- developers who were hired at those places. Mm-hmm. That's, again, studio execs that are saying, this is what people want because they're out of touch with the consumer, way out of touch with the consumer. Anyway, so my point being, let the current generation live a little bit longer and try to invest more in indie titles or just smaller companies in general, new ideas. And, you know, I... I, I, I really, I, I know I'm a Nintendo fanboy, but I, I'll just have to say, like, that's that's an area where I do see more consoles faster because their business model is more built around yes, we make the console and we make the games, right? Mm. And our games go alongside the gimmick of the console. So if you're if that is a selling point for you, whether or not that selling point is good, historically it has not always been good. Looking at you, Wii U, despite you being one of the greatest consoles of all time, and I'll die on that hill. I think that if that is your business model, that makes more sense to have newer consoles, uh, since that tailors with the way that your games are played. Look at the PlayStation Four, or excuse me, the Five, and it's super awesome controller. It's got so many cool things built so into sick. it. No one's developing so for it. So good. No one right. at all is doing anything with it. Steam that is Astro actually um, has actually put a lot of. Um, uh, I think they've worked on the software to like have that functionality now, so s- PC developers can work with the uh, DualSense hard uh, software, which I think is That's really awesome. cool. That's fantastic. Yeah, people. I, I. And again, it's not because like developers are lazy and they're not doing it. Yeah. No, they don't have the time. They don't have the resources. They don't have the money. You know, people aren't saying, hey, spend your money working on this. Mm-hmm. I totally understand that. But then, again, you go back to the time and money spent on the R&D to get something like that out, but people aren't making anything for it. Nintendo has always had that problem as well, you know, the from motion controls to the gamepad to the Virtual Boy. Like, it, it extends forever. So, I don't know. Uh, that one guy, you bring up a great question. What would a new console have to need for you? Or, wait, what would a new console have to have for you to need it? Hold that on. is a really good question. I want to before we interject with that question. I think the discussion on uh, Sony having a lot less titles for the PS5 versus the PS4, um, I think, is uh, more nuanced than just um, it is an executive uh, marketing decision. Um, I think uh, with the uh, amount of fidelity and um, development time that is uh, used to kind of develop these these AAA games. Um, uh, it's really hard for people to, uh, or for um, games to come out a lot faster when it takes nine, ten years to develop even one of these games. Um, so the fact that we do have like kind of six of these in, in, in a short lifespan is kind of nice. Um, but again, a lot of those games were also backwards compatible to the PS4. It made no sense that like uh, that. Even with backwards compatibility being nice, the PS5 is more of a luxury rather than a necessity. I think you explain even more of a reason as to why we need a more, a larger group and a more diverse group of development companies in general. Because if you have six of these guys, it takes them all 10 years to pump out a game, Mm -hmm. which rightfully so, sure, whatever, do what you need to do. Then, okay, 
make more studios. You know, I know that's a thousand times easier said than done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you as a publishing company, if you want people to not be making these kinds of arguments against buying or not buying your consoles, then invest in more companies. And you might say, oh, but Sony isn't that kind of producer. That's not the kind of thing that they do. They're not like Square Enix that goes out and, 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 you know, they're like Mm -hmm. a big financial aid to all these smaller companies. Okay, why not? Sony does a million things under the sun and in America and in Japan and in Korea. Like they do all these different things. They make products themselves outside of gaming. They do all this stuff. They're a music group. Mm-hmm. They have the money. They have the resources. You have, this is, this is a comment for every industry in the world right now. If you are a big conglomerate, you need to realize that as people are getting more and more and more upset with you, particularly and the idea of conglomerates as a whole, as they rightfully should, your best bet right now, and literally it is a bet, is to invest in more companies, invest in smaller people and smaller ideas. And, you know, I know that you're going to do that and then you're going to eat them back up and that's terrible, but try, if you can so help yourself, you greedy little monster, try not to do it. Because I promise, one, that competition is good for you in general, but two, you never know what people are going to come up with and then you as a company can make something even better than that. So why don't you do it? It's what the consumers want. It's how you'll get more money in the end. Instead, the only method these days, and I said this the other day, is how can we get the most out of those that already have the most? You know, that's what they're trying to do. They've squeezed every last little dollar out of us. So now they're trying to see what is, I mean, we had this whole, we saw all this during the the gambling and the loot box and everything. That's this whole discussion. But that's all that it is. It's, It's pay developers very little. Don't let them unionize. You know, don't let them have lives and hobbies and opinions of their own outside of what exists within your game studio. You know, cover up every little poor working environment situation that happens within your walls and get the money out of them. And until we see that go away, I don't know that we're going to get a lot of interesting new original ideas on consoles that people already don't have the money to buy. I think that kind of going back to something you said earlier and everything that that one guy said about like what a new console, like what would it have to have for you to need it and stuff is I kind of like feel like video games are going the way of fast fashion and stuff where you have all these, all these companies that are just making these kind of like maybe cheap is the wrong term when you look at something like the PS5 or whatever, but kind of these things that are, they're just selling out because it's, it's people they know people will buy it people want the new thing they want the next best thing and you don't necessarily need it you know i mean like the ps5 was a step up over the ps4 minimal but at least it has you know at least the controller at least it has something like that there the graphical upgrade is noticeable and stuff like that but where do you really go from the ps5 from here and so i think it really is more of kind of the status thing of i have this next best thing maybe there's not a whole lot of reason for me to have it but at least then i can say that i do yeah. so i think that maybe video game companies you know uh, especially sony and anyone that's making consoles you made a good point nintendo's kind of a little bit excluded from this because at the very least their consoles are kind of like almost gimmick based rather than graphical upgrade based like they've got their yes, own problems but yeah yeah exactly 100 percent. nintendo's not a perfect company but but their kind of console history is a little bit different than someone right. like sony or microsoft so i think that it's kind of going the way of fast fashion where it's more of just the idea that you have it and it's what's in right now and then we're going to make something new and it's not necessarily new because it's better it's just new because we made it more recently right um which is unfortunate and stuff like i i I think you made a good point also is like sure when like the gamecube came out and it was such a big step up from like nintendo 64 was like how does it get better than this and then it did and then it did again and then it continued to get better so sure maybe we'll see something here soon where i'll be like this is unbelievable i cannot believe i'm literally looking at what looks like a very real person on my screen that was generated by a computer if we get you know if we get to that point then i i'll seal my lips i was wrong and i'll fully admit that if i can be proven wrong then good you know that that then in this situation great uh that's that's only a good thing hopefully they don't try and like necessarily capitalize on that they will and i think to an extent they have a right to but not in a way that's like again as you said it's not like anybody has the disposable income today that they might have you know five years ago or whatever it's just a very different climate and stuff but i think that it's just kind of gone the way of fast fashion i think we'll kind of continue to see that for a while but that's just a kind of a forecast that I'm predicting. If things are very different than that, then, you know, so be it. But that's just, as the Lisa and Al-Gaib, it is written. I, 
I think maybe what we're seeing here is a much bigger problem with media consumption in general. And that one guy, I'm going to read your comment and then I'm going to address it. You say, if the consumers prefer those smaller games slash studios and those smaller games make the massive profits the big franchises like COD and FIFA have made, the industry could shift. I think you make a fantastic point. And it's what I was getting to earlier about a thought that I was having myself was we as consumers also need to do better. One caveat is the distributor market as a whole right now is not about supply and demand anymore. We know that. It's all about here's what we want to sell you and we're going to change the market to make sure that this is all that you have to buy. You know, monopolizing the situation Mm -hmm. and saying, we're taking away the quality, we're taking away your options because we're all in the same five companies in truth. And here's what you kind of have to get. If you want to enjoy this situation, if you want to enjoy this merchandise, if you want to enjoy this media, whatever, this is what you have to buy. And so consumers are kind of really being put in a situation of, well, this, these are just my options. These are my awful options. And this is just what I have to consume. Now, we need to do be better consumers and say, you know what? I'm actually just not going to accept this. This is what this is the level of quality I expect. These are my standards. This is what I want. So this is all I'm going to buy. I'm not going to settle for the cheaper thing. Not everybody has those means to settle, right? And everybody has the means to make that argument. And that's really what these companies want us to get to is for us to not have the nuance, for us not to be able to take a moment to assess our situation and assess the choices that we really have with one of those choices being to not act, right? To feel like we do have to buy. We have really been ingrained with this FOMO culture of if like you're saying just with fast fashion, FOMO absolutely goes into that is I have to have this mm-hmm. thing or else I'm not going to be a part of it. And then I can't jump into it later. I better do it now. And that was our same discussion last week with limited releases and collector's editions and things like that. And then, so yeah, we as consumers have to be better and we have to hold these companies responsible for making those kind of choices. So when it comes to that one guy's point about the consumers will follow that, I think they are following it to the means in which they believe they're able to. But those companies, those smaller studios don't have the same resource to resources to promote their games. You know, companies like TikToks, their algorithms aren't built to support small companies like that because of the way that Google and Facebook ruined advertisement. You know, so it's not going to make it to your page. And then a lot of people are going to say, well, I don't have a brand history trust with this group. $40 to $70 is a lot to spend on the game these days, well, always. So I don't know if I want to invest my time and money into something that I may not enjoy when I know that, you know, Mm -hmm. I like the Assassin's Creed series. I'm just going to buy the next one, you know, even though it comes from a company that is absolutely abhorrent. So those are the the actions that consumers feel that they have. Those are the only options consumers feel they have the choice for. So I agree with your point that the consumers should follow that Right now, I don't think the consumer industry in general, even outside of gaming, is built to follow that kind of trend. Mm -hmm. So we as consumers need to be more literate of what it means to be media consumers and purchasers in general so that we can take back the control in our hands and say, this is what I'm willing to spend my money and investment on. So you as a company need to follow that route. Well, here's something that I want to say, like based off that. when the PS5 came out, it for me, it was a big dilemma of, am I going to get this and stuff? And it kind of came down to, well, no, because there isn't really enough, like aren't enough games on there that I would, one, spend the time to really complete them. Uh, that's worth spending the money on the console and then the games and stuff. So, no. But it did suck because I wanted to play Spider-Man. I wanted to play um, Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League. You know, I I wanted to play, um, at the time, uh, Gotham Knights and everything like that. Like, I I wanted to play those, and those were next-gen exclusives that I didn't have access to. You know, now that I have this PC, like, it's it's, it's a bit of a different story. But at the time, it was like, well, a PS5 is cheaper than a PC. What am I going to do? But here's the thing. Going back to a Bloodborne remake and stuff like that, I doubt a remake will be released on PC. Or otherwise, they, you know, what if we just released Bloodborne on PC already? So it'll probably be PS what the hell six or seven exclusive launch title or whatever and then i know i'm going to be put in the dilemma of okay do i spend you know the 500 600 dollars on this new console or by then it might even be closer to a thousand depending yeah. Yeah, yeah depending on what you know what hardware is in this 
you know, do I spend however much money on the console and then however much money just to play this game, this game that I love so much that I already have access to the entirety of it because I own the game. I own the DLC. It's on, you know, at that point, an obsolete console, but I own the game. I, I own its entirety, you know, and stuff like that. But I, I want to see it. And, and you know, I want to see We were just talking about, you know, what's the point of a remake? Like, sure, Bloodborne doesn't need it. It's already perfect as it is. But I want want to see it in that graph of fidelity i want to see it in the full 60 fps i just want to experience it again in a way that is fresh you know even if that's just a new coat of paint over it yeah. you know i don't think they're going to do anything to it that makes it better than it is how do you perfect perfection you don't but you just put a new coat of paint over it i want to see it as that it deserves that but is it worth spending you know the almost a grand on the new consoles that we're spending a, probably the full $60 price tag on the game and the DLC just just to replay a game that I already own. Yeah. And like that is so unfortunate that that's a real conversation that I'll have to have. Yeah. And and like dang, you know, when that when the answer is so simple, like just just put it on PC. Just put it on PC and and remake it there. And then, you know, I'm not everyone has a PC. Okay. I, I like I again, I didn't even have a PC until y'all gave one to me. So I'm I'm very fortunate that I'm I'm in a different bracket than, you know, most people and stuff like that. But I would say that most people would have access to that game if they would just put it on PC and then we'd kind of avoid the issue of having to buy a whole nother console to yeah. be able to play it. And so I don't know. It's just kind of unfortunate that we're put in this situation. And yeah, I, I agree. The market and this this isn't a new conversation. I'm not presenting a new idea or companies you should be able to trust companies that kind of you know they're not monopolies but kind of monopolize the market on this you know that you should be able to trust and spend your you know give them vote with your money in that and you know in a sense you should be able to do that uh in good faith you you just can't you know yeah. you just can't and I, I i get that there's no really is no ethical consumption under capitalism but it's like come on y'all like you would make so much more money if you just made this consumer friendly and nobody is and yeah. like that sucks because i like again i i'm i'm very aware of the anti-consumer market and i kind of practice to the best of my ability for the most part not giving my money to things that are you know anti-consumer but i know that yeah if playstation comes out with the ps6 or ps7 or whatever it is and announce bloodborne remake exclusive on the playstation i'll have to have that conversation yeah. and what will the answer be i can't i cannot say for sure that i'll be able to turn away from that and i hate that because whatever i don't know i'm very unfortunate Bryce, I very much want to hear your thoughts on this in a moment. I'm going to add another point here and maybe another layer to this that I'm curious what your connection to this will be. I want to hear if y'all believe, and that one guy makes a good point that I think can be tangential to this. They say, with that said, and they ask you specifically, Josh, do you think consoles become obsolete? That I think kind of coincides with my point here. Are games being overdeveloped? Because I think that I can have just as much fun, if not more Ryan fun. doesn't like games. You heard it here first. <laughs> He's never liked games. games. I can have just as much fun, if not more fun, with a game that came out 20 years ago that looks, by these days' standards, like garbage, like visually, and maybe doesn't have the best quality of life or something, versus a game that came out yesterday. You know, I don't feel the soul in a lot of games anymore because developers are being run into the ground you know, their their lives are being taken from them while they're forced into gaming minds, essentially. And when it's all, I mean, it's always been about money, but when it feels more than ever just about a fast dollar mm -hmm. than a hard or an earned dollar, then I think I feel that still being taken out of games in general, the gaming industry, especially, sure. you know, as a larger statement. We were talking earlier about graphics and maybe we can wait a little bit longer on the next console cycle. So in the same vein of does the console become obsolete? Are games being overdeveloped? Because I don't need to see the sweat bead on every character in a video game. I don't need to see as close to real life as possible. I don't know. I need to I, see clouds bulge. So I mean, I need. Okay, that's so different, and you're so right. Yeah. And let me even see the pink through the fabric. Like that's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, great, great, great point, Bryce. Maybe I should shut up. <laughs> you should shut up. <laughs> he kind of gagged you a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Like I literally was like, I, uh, uh, I wish I was getting my club. I, yeah, I don't need to see all that besides the sex part. And I I just feel like if, if games and media in general are for me to suspend my reality for a moment and into a world that's maybe better than my own or to figure out the circumstances in my life through a world that's worse than my own, then allow me to do that without it being a parallel to my own. 
You know what I mean? Like I don't need to see every piece of gravel fall off the wall of a rock wall while I'm climbing it. That's just not what I need. You know, as a, as a consumer, I, I don't need it. So I don't need you to spend all your time and money and effort into that when the quality of life can be better, when the story can be better, when the music can be better. For my immersion into the world as someone who loves fantasy or whatever, someone likes to get out of a video game to be better. I'm curious if anybody's first, their very first reason they love a game is because it looks realistic. You know, mm, this isn't me fair. saying realism is bad. That's, That's not point. my point. Please don't take it that way. It's just that I don't think that that is a structure to what makes a good game. You, you boys know I love Nintendo. Most of those games, they have a more on the cartoony side of art design. And sometimes, and, and it doesn't have to even be cartoony, but, but just something more fantasy based than realism, right? Yeah. So maybe I just have a different take on what I enjoy playing. And that's fine. You know, if people like the realism, that's fine. But I think that for me, what makes a game great is not its realism. And so I don't think that so much more money and time and effort and development needs to be spent on that when there are other aspects of a game that could make it much better than how good it looks. Well, I, I want to actually take that point and go back to what Nut was saying in an earlier comment. And um, I, I look, I understand Nut was saying earlier, like this is why games specific art styles are timeless and games that go for realism look worse over time. And absolutely. I, I mean, he's absolutely correct on that. Um, and I think you kind of hit the nail on the head with Nintendo's kind of art, cartoony art style and stuff like that. Like something like um, Wind Waker, you know, which was made back on the GameCube or whatever. Still, such an iconic game, an iconic art style that you know. There's several people that recognize Link as he was presented in Wind Waker for a reason. I, I totally agree that games with a specific art style look so good, you know, and and kind of do have a more timeless quality. And I think that there's a lot that goes into that. I, I don't think realism is the selling point of a game. Um, and then addressing what that one guy said, do you think consoles become obsolete? I think that consoles become obsolete in the sense that they stop receiving new games, they stop receiving support. Um, so in that aspect, sure, they become obsolete. That being said, going back to Bloodborne and whatever, I own the game on my PS4. I own the whole game. I own the entirety of it. I own the DLC and everything. And for that reason alone, the PS4 will never be obsolete to me. That is where I can play Bloodborne. I can always go back to it. If I want to hop on it, I can play it. I can hop on and play with Bryce. He also owns Bloodborne on the PS4. You know, we can hop on there and play together if we feel so inclined to do another run through or something like that. We still haven't beat the last boss on the DLC, so we have that as well. Yeah, we but that. it's it it's it's like that's what I'm saying. So I think that games don't become obsolete and games that become locked to specific consoles, that keeps a console from becoming obsolete. So in terms of just, um, I don't know, like s general support from the company, new games coming out of the console, yes, they become obsolete. In terms of what games are already there and how much you enjoy those, no, they don't. Um, at, going back to the topic of graphics, uh, so going back to what Nut said, yes, no, uh, games with specific art styles do not become obsolete. That being said, though, there is you know an, an argument to be made for realism. So for, to play devil's advocate here... I agree that most games that go for realism kind of just don't really get it. You know what I mean? You kind of see some awkward little facial animations, and the game I'm about to present also has this issue. But um, when I played Helldivers 2 for the first time, and I opened up the game, and I got the opening cutscene, I was like, what the mm -hmm. hell? That is probably the most realistic I've ever seen a video game look at all ever. That was unbelievable. That cutscene was crazy. Well, it was a CGI it, tra trailer, <laughs> I think. Not, yeah, well, I wonder well, if it was well, in here, Game Engine. Here's what here's what I'm saying. Yeah, it was not a game engine because then when you get into the game and you look at the like the NPCs on your little ship or whatever, I was like, oh, never mind. Okay, there they go. Uh, that that's a bit a uh, bit more what I was expecting here. But you know, sometimes realism does blow me away. However, I'm sure in you know five in ten years, maybe even five or whatever, I'll look back at that cousin and be like, okay, never mind. Like <laughs> there, that that wasn't as good as I thought it was. But there, you know, there's an there's an aspect to be uh, kind of an argument to me for realism. But I I fully kind of agree with not is games that go for kind of a specific art style will always look better you know something like borderlands 2 which was released how long ago now still looks one really year cool. ago if you can believe it if you can believe it yeah. uh it still looks really cool because like that art style is so specific it's cell shaded which a lot of games have done at this point but still to, the, the character design and stuff like that is still just so 
unique to Borderlands, regardless of how many games have done cell shading, and it still looks wonderful in that regard. So I, I fully agree. We need new IPs so bad. Mm. We cannot just keep hammering on the same ones. We need new IPs. And especially as things get older, look at Zelda. That is 38 years old now. People are not going back to play 1, 2, and 3. You know, Link mm. to the Past is considered one of the greatest games of all time. People are not going back to play Link to the Past anymore. I know they have many options of how they can. They're not doing it. And even though the game lives up, like, you're missing a big part of that history. So my point being, like, in your not time, people aren't going back to play that game anymore. Newer generations aren't really doing that unless they're, like, a hardcore gamer and, like, a like a history lover you know mm -hmm. so they're missing big chunks of what people hold special and dear to that franchise that's just one example if you come into breath in the wild and tears of the kingdom you're gonna have a great time but there's so much to love about those games that i feel newer generations are going to miss out on because they don't connect it to the past in the same way they don't connect it to you know that that does whether it's something you feel or not that connects to your nostalgia that connects to your history to your childhood because whether or not Breath of the Wild was your first game, you knew about Zelda growing up. You know, you, you understand the point I'm making. Like, that's part of gaming history. We need new IPs so people can start, newer generations can start cultivating their own lore and poorly written child, like, creepypastas and, you know, all this stuff. Like, that's part of what pe makes people fall in love with gaming is the community that it builds around. Without new IPs that have their own unique styles and music and characters and all these things and this isn't to speak poorly of like shooters and these triple a titles that all look realistic it's just that that's not going to cultivate a positive good feeling community instead what we what, what have we seen in those communities the communities usually aren't so welcoming aren't so great it speaks nothing to the games and their quality but the kind of the people that not necessarily that it attracts but that it keeps within its wits you know we need those new IPs. We need them to succeed and we need money to go towards them so that new communities can pop up. More people can fall in love with gaming in, you know, the way that I think is healthy. You know, the way I think a lot of people would agree is what got them into gaming. And then I think if, if we see people invest in that way from a consumer, then we'll see people invest in that way from the market point. And then I think people look at the gaming community better and then people all around the world will be happier and they'll love each other. And everybody's going to love each other again. And it's because I said that gaming should be good again. And I'm going to make gaming great again. And I think I just fixed it. What do you guys think? I think I agreed. you fixed it. And yeah. there was a lot of great points that you brought up, Ryan. Yeah, well, you're right. You know what? Well, That's a good on. point. Because it was a lot of good points that I brought up. And you're right. Well, hold on. Speaking of good points, though, I'd like to turn this over to Bryce. Because out of the three of us, Bryce is the biggest gamer of all of us. Ryan just watches Let's Plays. I don't have the money. Or, Excuse and, me. And, I play. Hey. That's 400 hey. hours of content on that one hey. shelf. Thank you very much. And, and so how many sorry. of those have you completed? That shelf alone is about 400 <laughs> hours of completion <laughs> and this man alone. I'm just, I'm just saying, I just said, okay, let's take those 400 hours compared to the X number of hours you've watched in a Let's Play. Just saying. <laughs> uh, out of the three of us, Bryce is the biggest gamer that actually plays the games. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm just, uh, does he complete them? He Maybe plays not. seven hours <laughs> of 500 <laughs> games. Uh, to, to be fair, does he complete them? No. But but he does play them, okay? So Ryan watches Let's Plays. I don't have the time, and until now, didn't have the the access to play all these games. Bryce is the biggest gamer of the three of us. Bryce, what do you think about all this? What are your opinions? I, I need you guys. To do it, I need you guys to streamline some questions for me because it's hard to keep track of all the points that we've discussed. Because I feel okay. like there's like 15 Here, million of them. Here's Josh. I think you have a question. Here's one for me. What is what is something a new generation console could actually do to make you buy it? Mm -hmm. Here's one that I forgot to say earlier. The reason I bought a PS5 is because I wanted a 4K player, and I didn't want to spend a million dollars on one. I knew the PS5 could do it, and it was also a gaming console for the mm -hmm. new generation. I said, okay, I wasn't going to buy a PS5 anyway. This is a good way for me to kind of check all my boxes. So okay. what is something a, a new console could do, or what is a game that you just could not help yeah. but, but get that console for? So as Josh says, uh, I'm a degenerate. I don't leave my house. All I do is play video games. Um, and so when I saw that they were going to be remaking Demon Souls, um, and which I've like never played before and I've always wanted to, um, that was like an immediate cop for me. Um, I obviously couldn't get a PlayStation like then cause the, the supply 
uh, stuff. Um, but that was definitely one of the reasons. But also, I think when it, in terms, I think a lot of consumers um, for video games specifically, people who have bought a PS5, um, their mainline thing is like, I am buying this for longevity. Like, this sure. will last me. Um, and I think uh, going back to what I said about like Sony saying that this is like the end of that life cycle, it is really disappointing to hear that as somebody who was buying this and hoping like, obviously I'm very fortunate to have multiple consoles um, and like a PC and a, and a PlayStation. Like I'm very fortunate for that. But I think having like a producer to like say that like, hey, uh, get ready to spend another thousand dollars on another console for something that I was hoping to last me just as long as the PS4 cycle did with just as many great games it did. Because, like, even on the back end, we had Ghost of Tsushima, God of War, fucking, like, Dark Souls 3, even though that's not really, exclusive, like, yeah, yeah exclusive. Sure. But but you, do you know what I mean? It's like, it feels yeah, yeah. it feels kind of like a spit in the face on a consumer. Guy, consumer's like a consumer. Exactly. Um, so that's one thing. Um, but as a whole, my, um, my, like, takeaway is, lit, like, um, I was hoping for more longevity out of a console, especially for the amount of money that you spend on it. That, that's my take on that. Um, to that one, guys, my favorite game. I have two. Um, one of them's Bloodborne because it's gameplay related, and story uh, story related is The Last of Us. The I I love The Last of Us. The Last of Us is like one of my favorite story games of all time, and yeah. I don't really need to say much. Well, Everyone said everything about that game. Well, I want... Uh, I actually... To that one guy's question... Ryan, what's your favorite game? I, I kind of want to open that to the floor because I, I think that's such a... Maybe, like, I know we're kind of reaching the end here. I don't know if y'all are wanting to go past I'm it. I'm chilling. Or if y'all want to, or if y'all want to like, close it. And and if y'all want to close it, I think this is a good one to close it on. Yeah, I think um, it's a good one to close it on. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, what? So, Ryan, what's your favorite game? Bryce, those are great answers, obviously. Um, Bloodborne, fantastic. And Last of Us, who... You know, what more is there to be said? Favorite game growing up and the game that I have put the most time into and could always just pick up again in a moment's notice is Super Mario 64, without a shadow of a doubt. As I really started like falling in love with gaming and not just like specific games, um, Skyward Sword, um, which everybody says is the worst Zelda game, I think it's not only the best Zelda game, but one of the best video games ever made. And then I would say that the three Xenoblade Chronicle titles are like tied for some of the best video games ever made, just one of the best stories ever made, just from visuals to characters to the music to the worlds to the development to the combat like literally every single aspect of all three of those games are near perfect and i think it's a journey that every person in the world should take so those matches perfect and josh, um, josh what you got hmm uh, so my favorite game of all time is probably got to be Breath of the Wild. Um, I'll, I'll tie Tears of the Kingdom to that as well, um, since they're so similar and whatever. Both are wonderful, just fantastic games. If y'all haven't played them, I would say, so we just had, I, I know I just said the whole thing about it. The PSX comes out and Bloodborne is an exclusive. I'll have this whole dilemma about, is it worth buying it? Look, y'all, if you don't have a Switch, buy a Switch, even if it's just to play those two games, because it is worth it and worth Mario your time. Odyssey Every- Mario Odyssey has the best. Mario Odyssey as well. And, yeah, and I mean, I, okay, look. And a platformer and I've ever played. Let, it's amazing. Let- let me be clear. The Nintendo Switch is a wonderful console and has several wonderful Bangers. games on it that, that makes absolutely that makes purchasing the console absolutely worth it. Probably the strongest library. In Pikmin, 4, Pikmin, 4, Pikmin 4, Pikmin 4, Pikmin 4. Absolutely. It's, it's got to be. Um, so it's got to be those two games. Like Bryce, Bloodborne, um, played that with him. And just, wow, I can't say enough about it. Also, Story, music, th- gameplay, uh, just design wow 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 to um, give a uh, context to to my bloodborne pick i've probably beaten that game like 25 times <laughs> oh, yeah. I, i've played it so much i love that game so it, much it's so good i mean I, I i so now i i can say i'm a soul i'm a soulsborne fan i've only played um elden ring and Blood- elden ring and bloodborne and stuff so i still have yet to play my way through dark souls but it's on the back burner absolutely it's gonna it's gonna get to that point but i'm i'm gonna tie elden ring to my bloodborne take as well is bryce has kind of a differing opinion not that he doesn't like Elden Ring just it's it's a long game it's it's very long um I think Elden Ring is so good uh it has so much replayability there's so many things you can do in it you know you you can speed run that game real quick if you want there's so much to explore if you want to take your time every time you play you can do something different it's just a fantastic game I loved it um I was very afraid of playing it after playing Bloodborne I loved Bloodborne but I was getting my ass beat at you know every second I was like great so now I get to run around an open world and get my ass beat around every corner how fun is that and I played it I was like never mind this is the best one of the best games ever made 
Yeah, I'm, I'm going to tie Elden Ring to that. Also, so yeah, if you haven't played... Bl- uh, if I had to pick between Elden Ring and Bloodborne, play Bloodborne first. If you have access to a PlayStation 4, play Bloodborne right now. It is so good. Uh, uh, that one guy, I know you have a PS4, so... Well, hey, don't worry, that one guy. I'm sure we'll be playing every single one of those games on stream at some yeah, point. Absolutely. Dead Zone Forever. Dead, Dead Zone Forever. forever. Dead Zone Forever. So th- those are my picks. Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, Bloodborne, Elden Ring. Gotta be. Gotta I'm going to listen to a Mario speedrunning channel. Sorry, guys there we go let's see it yes i do have to call you that that one guy you got to play it you have a ps4 there's no excuse sorry man Uh, bryce you want to close this out absolutely guys i'm so happy you all have enjoyed my gameplay at the bottom you probably couldn't see it the entire time because it's so small (laughs) pokemon scarlet and violet uh thank you guys everyone who is here uh we really appreciate it especially all the chat interactivity thank you just to close this out i just want you to know uh ryan loves you guys josh what do you, how do you feel about these guys i love you guys all um, right I, as as, not point, what I do. as as bryce said thank you very much for for interacting in chat there were some great questions that went along with our discussion and it fueled it uh that was very fun um and again thank you to yeah i do want that money thank you uh, thank, thank I'll you. Again love to, I'll love them. I'll love them. I'll love them. He's trying to build uh, up money to buy the PS6 for <laughs> yeah, the PS6 and Bloodborne. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'll stream for you guys and give me more <laughs> money so we can continue feeding the beast. Um, but thank, thank you again for interacting and all that. Uh, thank you to you all uh, again, the the lurkers and whatever, for just having the stream up means a lot. Um, very absolutely. great. Love you guys. Not as much as Ryan, but I still love you guys. Okay, cool. So Ryan loves you guys on into a parasocial level. Uh, Josh loves you guys for the money, and I hate you guys. Thank you guys so much. Fuck you. Uh, We'll see you. We'll see you next time.